Hey everybody, this is Ruben from Pop Goulash. I uh, just wanted to reach out to everybody and say, hey, you can follow us on social media on Facebook at facebook.com slash pop goulash. You can also follow us on Twitter at pop goulash. Uh, if you want to participate with the show, please feel free to email us at popgoulash42 at gmail.com. And we also have a voicemail number where if you want to leave us a voicemail, let us know how we're doing or have any suggestions for us. You can reach us at 224-325-4235. And we will see you soon. Thank you very much. And let's get this show on the road. That was the most ridiculous introduction, but I like it. It works. It works. That, that's Ruben. <laughs> and that's Dana. And today, we have Shut Your Fucking Pie Hole. Uh-huh. That's right. <laughs> today, we actually have our first repeat guest. And Dana's here, too, to I experience know. a guest. I'm so excited. So uh, you I've been m- waiting on this, by the way, for like... Two, Ever. three weeks, yeah. <laughs> I've been too. waiting for this moment <laughs> for all my life. Oh, Lord. Phil Hood. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fill your hood. Oh, God. Drummer of Genesis, by yes, the way. Yes, yes. So, yes. In, uh, sitting to my right is my favorite Greeksican, Carlos Lopez. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to become the Alec Baldwin of SNL hosting, but <laughs> to the podcast world. I'm good with so that. I'm getting my start here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just cut your teeth here. It's good. It'll help oh. train you. So, We're what, uh, 25 episodes deep now or something? Eh, like, if you count completely? the point fives, yeah. yeah. No, 23, actually. This Is will be it? 24. It's like me counting my tattoos. It's like twenty three or twenty five. It's, it's something. It's like twenty ish. Look, after so many, you just lose count until it's I. Twenty teen. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, minus, it, minus the ones you regret. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a few. Well, the ones you can't see. Yeah. And unfortunately, yeah. I can see a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, but no, man, it's it's good to have you back in the studio, Carlos. Yes, it it's is. Good Thank to have you, you back in the hood cave. I'm glad that my my spirit animal is here in person. Yeah. I am. I am. We're like Ken. We're like related somehow. I we know. totally are. I swear to God, we are. It was amazing being able to be here with Ruben. Well, and, uh, th- th- that's the first that time anybody him. has ever said that. Oh, stop. But the dynamic of you guys together is Aww. pretty fucking awesome. Thank you. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Dude, fucking fist bumps again. <laughs> I love it. I'm All glad that you're town. here. Dude, we are totally dude broing it out down here. <laughs> we are totally. It's like bro biking with microphones. Yeah, right. <laughs> bro biking? <laughs> yeah. Did, you didn't see that meme with Justin Timberlake and Jimmy Fallon? No. <gasps> it's my favorite fucking. It's a gif, actually. It's my favorite fucking gif that's out there. Is they, it a gif or a gif? Because I believe the guy who created it calls it a gif. Yeah, well, he can fuck right off because I call it gif because it's a hard G. Yeah, but the dude who invented it calls it a gif. He can fuck off. Because that's not what I call it. I call it a gif. <laughs> Dude, that's like, that is so like <laughs> America right now. Or I'm sorry, 45's America. Uh, yeah, I'm like, hey, don't say it. Hey, I created this thing and this is what it's called. Wrong. Exactly. Wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. I don't care if you, you said it. It's wrong. You gotta say, I'll show it to you after though. It's fucking hilarious because you know they're like total bros in real life too. Oh yeah. It is this gif. Of the two of them on this shared bike. Oh, motherfuck you. And you just see them mouthing out the words bro biking. It's amazing. That's I love hilarious. It. It's bro biking. No, don't even put don't even put it up. No, I'm 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 gonna get down to the bottom of You're this. You're a whore. <laughs> so there's a GIF versus GIF debate. Download the GIFI app. Oh, the GIFI app. Yeah. In the, anyway. Anyway. So before we start getting into things, I want to give Mike Misery a shout out. What up, Mike? Dude, seriously, you called it the last episode that we tried to do with him. Lena Dunham can suck a big fat dick. <laughs> well, the last episode that we tried to like swap cast with him, it totally got fucked up. And it's, we, it's we've because actually, of Skype. Yeah, well, uh, producer Jake finally told me what it was. We, we have to un- the- we can't do a video Skype. Right. We have to unplug your camera because right. your camera has a microphone That's in it. That's what he told me, and I'm like, son of a bitch and that's so, where our fir- that's where our big mistake was that's why the one with jen turned out okay that one was okay oh. but Bless my you. mic sucked 
and um, her because she was doing it over her cell phone, so her connection was kind of bad. Right, so it made it a little choppy. Yeah, so we need to. So Mike, we this can is retool. a challenge. This yeah, is a challenge. We can redo it. But it's just going to be like you just Skype. There's you're no just going to have to talk to us. You can't come see. back, Mike. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're not going to be able to see my luscious tits. I'm sorry. I know, and he has very luscious tits. I'm very privileged because I get to feel them up pretty often. I think we all do at this table. Yeah, I think we do. Part. For the most part, I think part, we do. Yeah. Like mine aren't Africa boobs anymore, <laughs> but they've shrunken and they're kind of a good, considerable size. <laughs> 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 I, I busted that out to my girlfriend and her stepson last weekend, and she looked at me and she started cry laughing. She's like, "What the fuck did you just say?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, because they're not so fat anymore." And she's like, "Africa tits." Okay, I'm using that forever. I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> it just reminds me of that one uh, <laughs> that one bit that uh, um, Ron White does. He's like. What kind of guy doesn't like boobs? He's like, he could be a seven-year-old biker chick. <laughs> you want to see my boobs? Sure. <laughs> All right, roll them up. <laughs> Have you heard the one that Kevin Hart does Mm-mm. about orangutan titties? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. What? He's cussing out his school teacher because his mom gave him permission yes, to go yes. back. Yes. Yes, and I have heard that. That's hilarious. One of the things that he says to the teacher is well, like... Well, to set it up, he was... Sorry, I'm not trying ahead. to step no, over no, you, but this is just how I roll, especially <laughs> I'm two beers in right now. But no, he sets it up like he gets a note from his teacher about something, and his mom tells him, now you tell him, you go in there, say, you mind your goddamn business about the goddamn something. And then like Kevin Hart just goes off. <gasps> Kevin, do you have anything to say? Mind you, my mama said, mind your goddamn motherfucking business. <laughs> like, like, and he just goes off on this crazy tangent Aww. of swearing at his teacher. And he's like, I don't remember he how He throws old. in, you uh, long titty, no nipple, have an ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. See, now, now th- these are reasons why I want to get a boob lift. Because I don't want to be known as that person in another <laughs> 10 years. Oh, so <laughs> And if you haven't caught on already, this is not the podcast that you play live during church. (laughs) Nor is it one you play it with your kids in the car. (laughs) Yes. Absolutely not. So I'm fucking dripping ink all over my dress. That's all right. That's what spray and wash is for. (laughs) It looks like a stab wound almost. It does look like a stab wound on my chest. I just got new ink yesterday for those who are not friends with me on my Facebook page. Who can't be friends with her on her Facebook page because she's got that shit locked down like a chick with a chastity belt. Exactly. Sorry, sorry, all of our PG fans out there, all of our yeah. poppers. You're just gonna have to front. You're just Man. gonna have to like, you know. I'm friends. Like, exactly. You're you're in with the good crowd, man. <laughs> yeah, like we're we're you know look. Uh, I got a private life and shit. Yeah, right. So you, you can live our per, our personal lives on our pop goulash page. Exactly. Maybe I'll maybe I'll person. Dot com slash pop goulash. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start inserting some like random that fucking commercials nice in here. It was a good plug. So yeah, so uh, we just got a. Uh, Non-committal I love confirmation. This sippy cup, by the way, it's yeah. Ruben gave me a wine sippy cup. It's kind of my like jam today. It's good. Yeah, Kirsten got them for uh, for Christmas a couple years back, and they're they're plastic and they're for the pool and they're insulated and it keeps your shit cold. They're amazing. Sorry, and anyway. uh, and it's still classy. Exactly. Yeah, I look my, like a classy broad-ish. It's the yeah. tuxedo shirts of wine cups. <laughs> it says I like to party, right. but I'm also totally, cool. Yes, it is. The like the the clean mullet version of a wine glass. So clean what is a mullet. clean mullet? The clean mullet version where it's it's shoulder length. You you know straight hair not permed. Straight hair not permed, and it just you know it. Who who would I compare it to? When, oh, you know I can I got I got a perfect. Have you, you need se- to. <clears throat> have you seen Run Ronnie Run? No. It's it's got David Cross and he's I just fucking he, love him, dude. It's like he just plays this redneck piece of shit. <laughs> And it's kind of along the lines of, like, Mr. Show type stuff. Oh, yeah. And, like, Jack Black, I think, is in it. And Kyle Gass from Tenacious D. Love mm-hmm. Jack Black. But, like, mm-hmm. he, like, gets into some trouble. God, it's been years since I've seen it. But, like, he totally has, like, the spiky, like, yes! sting hair. Straight and then the, the straight mullet yes. in the back. Dude. Like, Stifler. It's like a party in the front. And, and like, just, like. Yeah. L- well, like Business Stifler up front, party in the back. In, um, what the fuck was the movie where Goon. he darted Will Ferrell? And Will Ferrell fell into the pool. Uh, uh, old school. Yes, thank yeah. you. Old school. That like that one too. Yeah. He that's... was like, yes, yes. <laughs> You're my boy, Blue. You yes. just took a dart to the neck. Yes. Wait, what? That... <laughs> oh yeah, because he's love... all fucked up. Yeah. Nice. Oh shit. So yeah. otherwise known as the Mississippi mud flap. Thank yeah. you. That's what it's called. Yeah. Thank you. Or an ape drape neck blanket. Ape drapes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I. 
neck blanket. I've yeah. not heard that one. That's fucking amazing. That's kind of like what I call like a, a chest carpet for men who have very hairy chests. Mm. I'm not a part of that club, fortunately. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not either. See, when you have an infant, you actually get the wax treatment because your child will rip the fucking hair right off of your chest, as mine does often. Which one, Bobby or Great? Oh, Bobby, oh, for I sure. Said, uh, it's cool. I can say the name. Yeah, at this point, whatever. Ooh, before I forget, I wanted to give a quick shout out. Yes. yes. That's cool. I want to thank my brother and the entire country of Poland for... 20 down, 21 downloads. Listening in, yeah. Yes, Now man, just, you got to listen to the other episodes, dude. Yeah, listen. Here's what like we want to do. It was like two or three episodes ago. Beautiful country, beautiful people, amazing food. Guys... I'm Polish. I've never been. Show up on the map this week. We want to see double the downloads. Share, comment... So you legit Show some know somebody love. out there, though? Yeah, his brother. My brother. I yeah. didn't read. Like, I... My brother, Jose. Really? Hi, Jose. Thank you so Hi, Jose, much, my love friend. You. Hi, Jose. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. For shizzle, my nizzle. Spread that around but, like herpes out there. Honestly, though. But please, do, like, <laughs> keep listening because, like, you know, that's that's the entire reason we do what we do yeah. is so y'all could listen. And have fun. Yeah. And we're kind of funny. Well, we try to be. I'm, I'm a kind of an asshole. Forget but I'm a funny ass- like that You're a funny surprise. asshole. Like I saw that uh, that meme up on it was like a, a gravestone. It says he was an asshole, but he was a funny <laughs> asshole. Makes it good. I agree. You know, I agree. It's, it's acceptable. It's the it's the good like There's no reason to be a bitter comedy. asshole. Be a funny asshole exactly. if you're gonna be one. I'm just a bitch, so I'm cool with just being a bitch. I'm a bitch. I'm yes. a little that, bitch. That's I'm a my child. karaoke song I'm whenever I go out. I'm Legit, I swear to God. I'm a saint. You were not be the same. <laughs> Thank you, Meredith Brooks. <laughs> yeah. You know what I hate about Meredith this? Because I was going to try to pull up the, uh, the uh, pop Google shares. Oh, my God. That to see who all was sharing. That was respectful. Our, uh, for, for Carlos's challenge from his podcast a couple, back, couple weeks yeah. back. Oh, yeah. You have to announce the winner. Yeah. Yeah. Who was that, yeah. Ruben? Dude. Like, <laughs> fucking the pop gula, like the, the, the feed page for... Um, it just got kind of violent here. I'm sorry. It's cool. I have pepper spray and a knife in my purse if we really want to get things to be interesting. And I totally carry a knife on with me with uh, at all times. <laughs> So, God damn it! I hate this. It's the app. It's, it's the, the app the sucks thing. dick. So uh, by the end of it, we'll figure it out. Okay, and I've got a a, a giveaway for the next people that are sharing. Dude, a you're fantastic. Nude couples massage. <laughs> Wait, did he listen to the pink nunchucks episode? That's why he's yes. like, <laughs> listen to the pink my nunchucks. <laughs> nude. I could totally, I could totally give you a nude massage. <laughs> God. And it would yeah. be a couple's massage. You, you know what it reminds me of? Those G.I. Joe PSAs, body massage. For anybody who has watched those. Mm, if- pork chop sandwich. Yes. <laughs> have you seen? You've not seen those, Carlos? <laughs> Holy fuck. I have to show you this. They are amazing. They were by, I think, uh, Fenster Films. They were kids who went to Columbia College in Chicago. Okay. And they took the legit G.I. Joe PSAs and they fucking dubbed over it with this ridiculous... <laughs> <laughs> shit and one of them is it's it's the african-american character and there's a power line down in the middle of the street and the kids pull up on their bikes and you hear him going hmm, hmm, body massage and then like the kids come up and he goes would you like a body massage oh. <laughs> they are amazing they are amazing some of them were I, I okay the majority of them were there were a couple where i was like Meh. you know what though i think that like they could have been funnier they could now pork chop sandwiches. Of course, the pork chop sandwiches one was hey, pretty good. Kid, damn I'm a computer. Stop all the downloading. Like just ridiculous shit. My friend and I at work. Anytime he says computer, I look at him. <laughs> all the downloading. Yeah, every time he says it, I'm like, stop all the downloading. <laughs> I love people that make stuff like that solely for the purpose of entertaining me. Yes, yes. You know, <laughs> it's that it's like, shit that makes you. my day. That's like the Kelly shoes videos. Liam K. Sullivan. I think I've talked about it before. You've not, if you've not seen that either. It's on YouTube? Yes. All okay. this shit's on YouTube. So, yeah, the, these are like 10, 11 years old. But the Liam K. Sullivan shit is hilarious. And I actually bought the EP from his terrible songs that he made. I own it. So. Have you ever heard of Chad Vader? No. Have you heard of Chad Vader? Isn't he the, like, the, like the second cousin of Darth Vader? Yes, he is. Yes. And he documents his everyday life with uh, working at a, uh, a grocery store. Really? Stock shelves in the Darth Vader, you know, costume. Stop it. 
Yes. And uh, you remember the song Chocolate Rain? Oh my God! Yeah, dude, he follows us on he follows face, us on, on Twitter. Twitter. No, he doesn't. I swear to God, dude. Wait, wait, what's his name? Tay Zonde. Hey, where the fuck did dude. I pull that out of? That's his name, though. Say, don't even fucking be ashamed of that video because uh, that it, it is amazing. It spoke life to me. <laughs> anyway, Chad Vader does a uh, an imitation of that video. Stop it! And when he backs away from the mic, instead of saying "taking a breath," yeah, it says something like uh, "you know, recharging respirator." Nice. Chocolate green. Oh Raise my god, your Tay, we will insurance rates. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so here's here's the thing. <laughs> oh. All right, we have uh all of two people that shared our fucking post. And god they're married. Damn it, people. And they're not even married. So I'm gonna let Carlos choose da, the name da, da, out da, of da. My Toxic Brewing Cap. This is uh Giving me that chance that the Bozo Show never did. Thank right. you. <laughs> All right. And here, I was on the I Bozo will, uh... Show, too. All right. So the winner of the $20 gift card is Eddie Deans. Yay! Hooray, Eddie! Yay! All right, Eddie. So to claim your reward, Ain't hit giving us. you shit. You need to show us your nipples on Facebook. Or just, you know, slip us a dick pic on our email address. Because I'm cool with that, too. Apparently, no. people love to send me dick pics. <laughs> no. So, um... <laughs> To, to claim it, just send us an email at popgoulash42 at gmail.com, mm-hmm. and uh, Carlos will get us the uh, the code, and we will send that to you forthright. For real. After nipple shots. I know, Eddie, <laughs> personally. Oh, do you really? Ah. Yeah. There was no collusion involved, by the way, with this. You tell that bastard, thank you so much for sharing. And he is a connoisseur of podcasts, by the way. He showed me his list. There's like... 30, 40 different podcasts that he Tell listens that to. to thank you, Magnificent Bastard. Including this one. Sweet. Yay! Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, you Magnificent Bastard. <laughs> so, so, let's 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 get into this PG uh, shit. I know, right? Carlos. Yes. Uh, see, I no, thought that, I was going to say you. No, I'm glad you didn't. It I scared hoping. me a little bit. What actually. have you been considering this week? Man, I binged watched High five. The Defiant Ones. Fuck yeah. Oh my god! So is the entire series oh. up? No, it's four it, episodes. It's only four. It's season one, but it's only four episodes. They're like hour, and I think the third episode was like an hour and a half. So the answer is yes. The entire season is up. I'm well, sorry. season one, yes. but season one, right? It's not the whole Again, series. Again, the entire season is up. I did not say I, series. I misheard yes. you. I yes, thought yes. you said series. That's why I'm like, no, it's no, just stupid! It's one. the whole season. Like I said, it the whole season. No, it's the, the, the whole season's up, not the series. If you have not You're seen close this enough to him, just put, dip you him. need to watch this shit because, dude, I will. HBO. I'm not gonna lie, and I'm being 100 percent transparent here. I cried at the end of the series. I did too. Or Fuck the end you. of the season. Sorry. High five because again, my soul brother. I'm gonna. It, it documents the entire rise and empire of Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine. And they did it beautifully. And it was really, truly a rag to riches type story. Well, here's my question about it. Okay, I know you're about to tell us, but yes. I have a question. Does it do everything like the Pearl Jam 20 documentary does, where it just completely whitewashes, and not in the racial sense, but it whitewashes everything so that everything they do looks perfect no. and gleaming? No, not at all. Or is it one of those where it's like it's warts and all, like the Foo Fighters uh Foo Fighters documentary. You've got. The, you need to watch it. All the shit, the it's, lows, it's the highs, every, everything, everything in between. Yeah. It goes into more. I'm, I don't mean to cut you off just for a second, but it goes into more depth than I think. <laughs> As like you combat. refill your wine, I know, right? <laughs> it's not whiskey, thank God. We do have a little bit left. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. No. It was great. Listen, um, it. I identified with it a lot because growing I, up black in Aurora. Yes. Well, I grew up in Peoria, I know. but you know. The struggle was real, as they say. <laughs> but I've come out of so much shit, and I'm in a position now where I feel like I'm starting to benefit from that. Came from the bottom, now we're here. Now, the whole crew's here, but what really spoke to me, man, was the tenacity and the drive inside of both of those. Mm-hmm. And it gives you hope and kind of speaks to that, because I have that, and it can be, it can be so frustrating sometimes because you feel like, there's always something more. There's always something next. You, right. You're never 100% satisfied. Sure. And um, it was amazing. It was amazing. I want to watch it again. So if you haven't I seen do. it, please do yourself a favor and go see it. What did you think, Dana? I loved it. I'm so glad, too, that you were able to watch it before today. Um, 
My buddy at work recommended it. And it, the only reason that I was able to catch it is because we have a free HBO preview this week, like Yo. this whole week. So, um, dude, Game of Thrones, GOT, you got to catch up. Bitch. Now. I will never watch that show. Dude, it's so fucking good. And the female characters are so well written. You've never seen Game of Thrones? Never. Dude, it premieres tonight. No. Yes. Can we switch seats, Ruben? Yeah, sure. <laughs> You guys can bro out about it. No. Um, but She's I, not into the fantasy shit. I'm not. I'm not. It's so it's much so, more than fantasy, though. I know. I know. I, perhaps down the road, I'll give it a, I'll give it a jaunt. But right now, no. Nah. No, she would rather watch fucking the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Fuck you. Fuck you. And fuck you. Ooh. Who's cool? Me. You're not going to understand this <laughs> now, but I guarantee you if you will watch it, you will develop a Tyrion fantasy. Dude, Tyrion's the shit. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Although he's a little person, or a midget, vertically challenged, person. unapologetically midget. So yeah, because you guys talk. Well, we'll get into that in a second. But <laughs> I don't want to get too far. Yeah, I don't want to yeah, take sorry. it. Away. I don't want to take it away from you, Carlos. But I, you're good. I loved. I do because I'm an the, asshole. <laughs> I loved this season of the Defiant Ones. It just the in the way that they did the stories and and kind of. The way that they synced them together side by just side, right. seamlessly, it was perfect. And it, and it went through all of that shit like of the 80s and through the 90s. And they, and they talked about a lot of the political environment. And yep. it just it, it is such a good series to get started on. Fucking amazing. And they were both from the streets. One yes. was from Boston. One was from Compton. He was from New York, actually. New York. Yeah. He was, he was from uh, Brooklyn, I think. One's the innovator. One's the levitator. Yep. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what. Yes. Yes. Ruben. Was Eminem in it? Yes, he yes, was. Yes, okay. he was. And Document's the first time that he met Dre, too. Yes. See, it's because Eminem's a white rapper, and it's the only introduction into hip-hop that I have. I'm no, that's a lie. I'm telling you, when you see this, like like Gwen Stefani was on, they talked to all of these artists, like the fucking, the beat, like the John Lennon thing, like that connection. I'm, I don't want to spoil it. You have to watch it, because... Well, yeah, because it wasn't, wasn't, in, wasn't No Doubt on Interscope? Mm-hmm. That's, that, that's Gwen, the connection. Gwen, Gwen. Yeah. 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 He saw her and found her. That's exactly... Jamie Iovine. Yep. And he's amazing. You Which is funny me because about the wasn't, Stern interview, I didn't listen. Wasn't he the one that was on, uh, or I'm sorry, wasn't, I'm trying to think here, sorry. It's okay. When Gwen was on I Saw Red with Sublime, wasn't that previous to their, like, it had to have been. Because, what year was wait, that? When did Tragic Kingdom come out? 95. It was, okay, it had speak. to have been before then, then. That she was on that because... Oh, yeah. They were friends. I Saw Red came out after Bradley died, and Bradley died in 96. So, well, or 95 but or 96. Tragic Kingdom... So I think he died in 96. It was recorded prior to him dying, though. But yeah, but they were they were all friends, though, because right. all the Orange County kids. But that's... Yeah. Well, when Jimmy saw Gwen, they signed her. He told her, in six years, you're going to blow up. He did. And to the and year, he called fucking it. fucking to the year. Really? This guy is... Because they, they well, partnered the guy, on the Beats <clears throat> deal. With Apple Music. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah which Dre almost lost. <laughs> yeah. They go into For that. The they talk about that. They talk about all that stuff. It is fantastic. When you're able to catch up, I can't wait to hear your thoughts about it. I'm, I know you're like Can you waiting get, to hear his like, thoughts. Can you get closer into the mic? It's kind of actually cockeyed. It, I'm all about it. it it's eye cocked? Yes. <laughs> and by the way, if you haven't, listen. All right. So listen to that interview of Jimmy Iovine with Howard Stern. Get over your '90s bullshit perception of Howard somewhere? Stern. Yeah, it, it'll be on. It'll be on YouTube. I'm sure that's okay. not Howard anymore. Like he's probably one of the best interviewers like I've listened him, to. Though. So yeah, and I the, used to say the same thing about Opie and Anthony, and then like, op- they split on up. 102. No, no, no. XM? No, no Opie on X- and they, Anthony. They, they used were, to be on XM. They were on TV Chicago, too. Right? Were no, no, no. They were in Chicago for a moment. Okay. They were always New York, but they oh, no, broadcasted on Chicago of? on uh, 103 or. 97. 97. Nine. They were on the loop originally. It was on the yeah. loop, yeah. Because they filled the void after Stern went to satellite radio. That's right. So they did that, and then Anthony, like two or three years ago, went on his like weird kind of almost racist tirade. Right. He got fired. Opie and Jimmy went on after that as the Opie and Jimmy show, and then they split off because there was a rift there, and then Opie just got fired, which tells me maybe Opie's a dickhead. He's a dickhole. The Jason Ellis show just got booted off a of Sirius XM too. Oh, that was on forty one. All right, Faction? guys, I yes. apologize to anybody listening right now. I'm going to shut off my internet because you just got a nice. Bleep, bleep, bleep. 
because it's That's telling fine. me that I have to restart my laptop. It's just ear candy for them. It's an extra. It's a bonus in this episode. By the way, if you're Opie and Anthony and you have that platform and that level of success, why do something stupid and tweet out something racist? Well, but, exactly. but the funny thing was it wasn't... It, it was, probably wasn't was inherently it, racist, no, but people took it that but way. But what right. had happened was, and this is way off topic, and why are you hand sanitizing down here? It's not like I jizz all no, over no, my no, basement. No, because my hand, because I got wine on my hands. We don't know that. Well, I mean, that's true, too. I don't have a fucking black light here. I'm not CSI in this shit down here, so <laughs> I can't totally well, confirm okay, that. Okay, that's, that's a fair assessment. <laughs> But uh, I love you, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Thank what you. had happened was he was out in somewhere in New York. I don't know which borough because I don't understand the New York and the borough system Ugh. because I've never been. The boroughs of New York. We'll have to go sometime, man. I can't wait. Two and, and then weeks. And then, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you and Mike can do a podcast while you're out there. Maybe. And then uh, challenge to you, Mike. I'm not gonna. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, so. But he was out at like two o'clock in the morning. He was just out taking f- pictures because he's a photographer. Mm-hmm. And I guess he took some picture of some woman, some African American woman or black woman, as they you know they can be called because saying somebody is black is not black. a racist thing. No, it's not. it's not. I use black all the time. Right. So he right. took some picture, and this woman like assaulted him, like physically assaulted him no. for taking a picture without her permission. Shit happens in New Which, York. Yeah, I mean, which I, look, granted, but, he should have never taken the picture without her permission. Well, that's what but I was she was say. far enough away; it was like a silhouette of a person. I imagine it going like this: "Ching, uh, uh, motherfucker, uh, what you doing?" <laughs> right. So, but apparently that happened. She assaulted him, and uh, he went on some tirade on Twitter and said, "You know, these people are animals, oh. or she's an animal, or something." Oh. And yeah, well, you so done pissed off all of New York, son. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so and then uh, instead of XM allowing them to come into the studio because it happened over, I think, Fourth of July weekend. Because this year, no, this was like two years ago. Okay, two years ago or three years ago, maybe. But instead of allowing him to come into the studio that following workday, where they to explain himself and to have Opie and Jimmy just completely rip him for doing it, right? They just fired him. You know what, though. I mean, I understand. That's the climate, though, unfortunately. But you know what, though? Here's the in. deal. What what Anthony said on Twitter is nothing different than anything he'd ever said live on the radio. Understandable. But because it, a bug got up somebody's ass and yeah. they got all pissed off about it, you know how that shit escalates. Public relations Oh, my God. In. He right, said something right. and I am offended hurt my inner child. Fucking I snowflake. <laughs> You're incredibly good at that, and I'm a little scared. You are. Right? It's a little scary. No, it turns me on, actually. <laughs> I, I see a little chub happening. Well, that's how his wife talks to him. So. Oh, it all makes oh, sense shit. now. All right, Carlos, on, we're going to divert on. it back. Oh, that's a gauntlet being thrown down, <laughs> bitch. That's, that was Ruben putting his dick on the table. I need some burn cream, because that hurt. <laughs> um, I all have right, some so anti-back. Yes. But what else have have you been been consuming? consuming? (laughs) Okay, so I've been, uh, in addition to that, I'm pulling up my music list here because... And don't ever fucking post and ask people about Apple Music versus Spotify again. Well, whatever. I'm giving you shit. (laughs) Ruben giving me shit out of nowhere. I don't care. (laughs) Because I thought it was a settled issue. (laughs) I got your opinion on it. (laughs) As I said, I thought it was a settled issue. (laughs) I mean... So I was listening That's to one it. thing that always irritates me. He's like, so, Ruben, how would you do this if you were to do it? Oh, well, I would do it this way. Well, I'm not going to do it that way, so fuck you. So why'd you even ask me? <laughs> Especially when it comes to, like, cooking shit, because I like to cook. I know how to cook. So, Ruben, um, how would you make this? Or how do you, not how would, how do you make this? Well, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do that. Here's the seven steps. This is the shit you put in it. All right, I'm going to buy a box, and I'm just going to put it together that way. Go so here, here's yourself. what you got Stop asking me for my opinion about how to do yep. shit if you're not going to take Here's what you got to do. Okay. Take the Gordon Ramsay approach. Yes. Hell's Kitchen. When they ask you your opinion, and then they don't follow it, you go like Call this. Call a donkey. Come here. Come here. Come close. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to kill somebody. So I got Ken- around and look. Well, Kendrick Lamar, um, Jose Gonzalez. Which, which, which is- Kendrick, the new one? Uh, damn, yeah. Damn. Band of Horses, Gaslight <gasps> Anthem. You like Band of Horses, I do. Too? I've seen God. Band of Horses. They're so good. I'm I sorry. saw them open up for Pearl Jam. <laughs> oh, so 
Contemplating going to take a trip to the Ben Folds concert coming up. You're going to go. If you go, tell me. I don't have tickets. They're relatively... They're not... They're I not mean, terribly expensive. Right. They got these new experiences where you pay like a buck twenty-five, and you go it. backstage... You get a free private piano lesson from Ben Folds. I I've always said if I meet somebody famous, I'm gonna smack him as hard as I can. I met him so last they'll never year. forget my ass. I met him last year when we saw him, dude. If you okay, s- seriously, if you do decide to get tickets, let me know and I can fucking pay right. back immediately. I will totally go with you. So anyway, that's recently, more recently, just uh, some music, the Defiant ones I binge watched. I'm going to be starting on GLT tonight or tomorrow. So, Man, explain that for people who don't know what that is. Game of Thrones. Again, that is no, I know, Game I know, I know. You guys Thrones. talked about it, but just in case. I won't be watching that tonight. I'll be oh, reading my so book. fucking good. <laughs> and then I watch <laughs> random shit on YouTube. <laughs> right. mainly, mainly like world star hip hop or shit like that. Dude, you know what we right. watch on fucking YouTube? Choo Choo Surprise. Choo Choo Surprise. It's this weird, horrifically animated Indian educational thing that Grayson loves to watch. So what's the surprise part? They, like, take these little eggs and, like, they're like, you know, like an egg. Like, you, you go into the, the, at the, the grocery Easter store. Egg. Yeah, like an Easter egg. Or you go into the grocery store, you turn in a little thing, you put a quarter in, you get shit Oh, out. that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, it's like, yeah. but it has, they're, they're, it's always themed. And, like... <laughs> like they open up the egg, like the eggs are like big bee, big bee. but they have like it's so weird because like they put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable half the time because it's <laughs> like being tra- like I don't know if it's just that it's weird because it's being translated from English or from Indian to English probably or if it's just like Indian folks who granted like as Lucy Case says probably speak English way better than you or I <laughs> because they actually speak the king's English but for whatever reason, it just it just the, like I said, the emphasis is on the wrong syllable. Oh my God. It's so weird because they're like open, open. They say open three times as they're trying to open the this stupid egg. It's open, open, open. You sound Thank Japanese, you. <laughs> but it's not. This is how they fucking speak. It's so eerie and creepy. Do it. Borderline racist. It's, yeah. Right, right. How can it be racist? They're the one doing it. Are they Asian? No, they're Indian. They're so, yes, Asian. they are Asian. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, unless We're going to open egg today. Unless you talk to like an East, like an Eastern Asian person, they would get offended by saying that. Right, right. As I, I was involved in a conversation on Facebook about <laughs> because we were talking about Asian architecture and apparently that's racist. I don't know. I just don't get Or no, no, no. Oriental. It was Oriental. Because it's from the Orient, I don't know, whatever. Suck oh. a dick. Anyway, um, so uh, last so, thing, yeah, I've been playing guitar more, learning I didn't songs, know you, what? and I've been working on my Aaron Neville impression. Oh, dude, you got. I do think it. you've heard. I have. Heard oh my god, it. please. Okay, this is for all you poppers out there. Hold Here on, we sit go. Back, sit back, because you're gonna enjoy this. <clears throat> I'll do Silent Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. There you go. I wanted to draw a mole on your face. Put some reverb on that shit. I will say this. I am probably the only person in this room who has actually seen Aaron Neville, and that That's was fucking, fucking spot, spot on. on. Why you. don't you come and do karaoke with me sometime soon? I love karaoke. Fuck. What? Dude, we just became best friends again for like the eighth time. Like the eighth time. <laughs> God damn it. I'm planning something in Word. August. God so. was like, this is too much awesomeness for one person. Exactly. I'm going to duplicate it, it with this person here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love it. So yeah, that's that's it. me recently. Word. Thank you, Aaron. I mean, Carlos. <laughs> what you got, Dana? Well, so okay. So as Carlos mentioned, I bless you. What? Oh, were you just telling me to stop so you could burp? No, actually, I was going to ask if uh, producer Jake had handed the book over to you. Yes, he did. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for that. By the way, I have not started that yet because I started another book. But A million thank little you. pieces by James Fry was the author. I think I misquoted myself in That's the previous okay. episode, but it's James Fry was the ad- 
I think I said James Patterson, but he, it wasn't. No, I don't even think you said I, James Patterson. I, it was I somebody else. It was James said, somebody, James but it was something. James Fry. James Frankel. James, James Frankel. St. James. From James St. James? <laughs> no, you guys have never James heard of Jameson? him? James Yeah. No, James St. James is like a character, well, a, a, a club kid character from Disco Bloodbath. Yeah, that was the Michael that. Alec shit that happened in the 90... 90- what? You guys never saw Party Monster? No. Nope. <gasps> what? No, I avoid Macaulay Culkin like most people avoid Keanu Reeves. No, dude. I will tell you the way he portrayed <laughs> Michael Alec in that movie. I don't even know who the fuck Michael Alec is. He was is. a club kid. Either. He was a club kid. Oh, my God. So I'm totally going to go off on so that a tangent random for a club minute. Kid? I don't this, give a shit about club kids. I was never a club kid. But no, but he's asking. So like in the 90s, like especially like late 80s, early 90s, the club kids were coming up like it was the culture. It was like, you know what I mean? So like that's rave what culture. was. Rave culture. Yeah, like the rave culture. But this guy. Everybody's he, doing X. Right, exactly. Oh, it was I all, so the, miss doing X. The drug culture. <laughs> like it was all that shit. And so Michael Alec, this kid who came from like fucking okay, I know you want to keep Indiana. looking at him when you talk. Because by what you do. I can't help it. It's like you're going to talk to Leslie and it's here. Hold on. For those of you listening, he's adjusting her mic. Thank you, sir. Um, He came from nothing in fucking Indiana. That was really good. Thank you, doll. He came from, like, nothing in Indiana, went to New York, wanted to pursue this shit. He was sucking on chili dogs outside the Tasty Freeze. Um, But he went to New York. He wound up becoming, like, a really hot promoter for all of these, like, events. And Party Monsters, based off, he murdered somebody. Really? Yeah. Shit. I mean, it, it, they were on do? Sally Jesse Raphael. Like I remember that when I was in high school. Did you just say Raphael? Sally Jesse Raphael. Yeah. When they were on that. Wh- what? Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael. <laughs> Shut up. Leonardo. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No, they were on her show though. When she actually had a fucking show in like the nineties. Dude, you know who else was on Sally Jesse Raphael? <laughs> Gigi Allen. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! I Gigi watched Allen. Those was, I watched those too. They were. Th- that's what I'm saying. Like I remember watching this shit. When I was younger. Oh, I watched it when I was an adult on like fucking YouTube, but still. Did you ever watch Gigi Allen's funeral? No, but I'm sure it was a crazy shit show. Jake owns that. Or not Jake. I'm sorry. Not Jake. Todd owns that DVD. And and not even a DVD. It was fucking VHS. Yeah. I call him Jake. Like, that's not a bad thing. That's my husband. (laughs) Yeah, but you associated Um, your husband with your ex. No, but... It wasn't on purpose. Um, Todd owns. Oh, my God. Don't give me the fucking look. (laughs) Todd has that, though. And like, I remember watching that. They fucking videotaped the whole. Oh, I'm sure it was like a crazy circus. They had like whiskey bottles under his arms and shit. They didn't embalm him like nothing. It was like a fucking crazy punk rock funeral. Wow. Yeah, man. This is the same guy that like would shit. On, he would on shit on stage and, and, and fucking rub it on himself. He'd slash himself people. with like, bo- yeah, oh, dude. Yeah. He was fucked up. But you don't fucked up in '92. His from brother, that CKY video. Yes. His brother, where Chad Ginsburg is like <laughs> drunk as shit. His brother Merle <laughs> Merle Allen. He still does shit, but he's like big. So I actually watched this documentary about. I'm big into true crime. I've mentioned this before. There was something on Amazon Prime that I watched. It was something about like murder, like these people who like the the murder shit, like the um who buy the Gacy like paintings and shit. Oh, there's a whole museum actually in California. It's yes. called the Murder Museum. The Murder Museum, yes. Mm-hmm. And Merle Allen owns a ton of this like artwork and shit, and that's Gigi Allen's brother, and he was on in the there. museum. No, not in the museum, but they were at his house showing, well, his apartment, I guess, but like showing all of the stuff that he owns. Really fucking cool. I can't, shit, I'd have to look up the name of the doc again, but it's on Amazon Prime. But anyway. If you like murder mystery stuff, Love or you have to listen to the podcast called Sword and Scale. I've listened to that. Do you listen to My Favorite Murder? No, I've never heard of it. <gasps> what? Same vein of podcast or no? It is. Oh my God. Please listen. Okay. And start from the beginning. My favorite murder. It's Georgia Hardstark and Karen Kilgariff. And it. I, I'm searching it's, for it right it's now. Under, okay, good. So I'm struggling with my words when I say this because murder is not comedy. However, Karen Kilgariff Ooh. is a comedian. I like their design using the. Uh, Isn't that fantastic? Like the cutout letter? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the fucking. The like, ransom note design? Yes. Yes. The ransom note design. I'm telling Subscribed. you. Subscribed. Yes. Listen from the beginning. Start at the fucking beginning. They're like, I don't even know. Yeah, like, like 75, 75 episodes. Five, on yeah. Here. Listen from the start because they oh, started wait. January of 2016. This is a comedy? 
that's why I said I struggled with that because okay. it's, it's under comedy, but not that murder is comedic because it's not, but the some of the delivery. Just listen. <laughs> you know, I have to appreciate though when, like, if you're watching a movie and they're playing happy music and people yes. are getting killed. Yes. It's yeah. such a contrast. You don't know how to feel. Exactly. Because it, exactly like it fucks with your head with yeah. that. And that's how that kind of stuff for me kind of works. Like on Goodfellas. Yes. Same thing. Yes. Casino. I was just going to say casino too. <laughs> Same. Cheers, my friend. Cheers to you. My soul brother. By the way, I got to thank uh, Ruben. He brought some beer from Solemn Oath Brewery in Naperville. And I am drinking the Old Faith Warren. And it's pretty damn good. I don't really drink beer anymore, but I am drinking... Or whiskey. Or whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. On the bicycle, that was awful. Um, I'm drinking Chloe Chardonnay. I have no fucking idea who makes this. Let's see. All it says is classic beauty bottled. Yes, I know. I know. I'm sitting right here. I'm aware. Um, I like wine, but I hate Moscato. I don't like Moscato. I can't drink reds anymore because they make me ridic. <laughs> it's pretty awful. Kind of like the whiskey. Right? So, like, that's how red wine affects me now. So now you're down, you paired it down to just white wine. White wine and vodka ish sometimes. I yeah. do like vodka with some seltzer water. See, wedge of lime. Yes. Ah. Praise By you. the way, where the hell is Ruben? Um, so he's taking an extra long piss and that's fine. So we'll just keep bantering. So like he asked me what I was consuming. Yeah. So I don't even remember so where the I defiant devi- ones, the deviant ones, the defiant ones, <laughs> the Devi- deviant we ones. are the deviant, we are ones. The deviant <laughs> ones. Um, so that for sure, like uh, the way that you talked about it is spot on. It, it is just such a good representation of not only the careers of Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre, right. but it talks about NWA. It talks about John Lennon. It talks about all of those people. You hear about Stevie Nicks. I didn't fucking Everybody. know she dated him. I didn't know she dated Steve. Or, uh, like How Dre discovered Jimmy Snoop. Iovine. Yes. Trent Crazy. Reznor discovered Marilyn Manson. Oh, my God. And then when, when they talk about the record deal, how Trent Reznor like, got off the indie label and then went to Interscope, yeah. it is such a good watch to find out more of those stories. And for me, I, like you said, I cried at the end. No joke. I did, I too. I cried at the end of the fourth episode. I ain't ashamed of it, either. I, see, I love you even more, mm-hmm. man. Love you even you gotta more. You got to hear my that. story sometime. We definitely will have stories to swap. Because there's a line in, and I don't mean to cut you off, I'm no, sorry. No, you're fine, honey. There's a line uh, with Jay-Z, Kanye, we were listening to it in the car. Niggas in Paris, that's the name of the song. Okay. And there's a line in there that says, we ain't even supposed to be here. That's my story. Like, I've had shit stacked up against me, and here I am now, running my own company. Cheers to you, Living man. life. And I'm excited about what's coming up next, you know? Because you have a new venture that we talked about earlier. We're not going to oh, talk yeah. about it now, but... Uh, we'll give you guys a chance to invest. <laughs> right, exactly. During the first round. Prestige worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get in on the ground level. This is how to do it. No, but seriously, we do need to talk about that offline. Yeah, so anyway, no. if, you guys, if you guys have any groundbreaking ideas... Let Send us hear him. Carlos's way, man. He's yeah. like the idea maker. <laughs> the idea maker. The idea. The idea. Um. The idea factory. Right. Like, it's a I'm good the, thing. I'm the dream baker. <laughs> the dream baker. That's fantastic. So, so I have to ask you. So, I'm totally getting off track, and I don't give a shit because it's going to be a good podcast. So, you have two companies. Did you come up with the ideas? Three. Like, th- it's three. Sorry. Yeah. And you came up with ideation? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to be pretentious in saying I that. I know you're not. No, not at all. But I mean, like, I knew you had a... I, so I let me tell you, the, let me give you a snapshot. So I, I was working at a church. Uh, I got let go from there because the budgets weren't able, they weren't good enough to... Which, by the way, I remember, yeah, it's kind of a shitstorm. If I'm going to hire somebody, I'm not going to require them to go to the church. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, because yes, yes, yes. You saw. Yeah, you heard what I talked about. So I left there, started working at Starbucks for a year, and then I started working at this company, which I own now. Um, I've been there for about nine years. Wow. And about a year or two ago, walked up to the owner and said, hey, listen, I love what we're doing here, and I don't know how, but I want to buy the company, and I want to run it. Oh. 
and we had brokers coming to the table with like offers and stuff like that, and he was turning them down. So it's crazy. It's crazy, and I'm and I'm humble about this because I realize that it's not. There were people along the way that were in, instrumental and in helping sure. me become the person I am. Right. So sure. it's a group effort. But you're welcome, Carlos. Thank you, Ruben. <sighs> and welcome back, by the way. Might as well say you <laughs> smell really, really good, sir. I Do know, I? doesn't he? Thank you. I, he like it was cute when I pulled up. He invited me into his car, and I'm like, I love it. And I was like, Oh, he smells so good. So I oh, remember I a little, like a half a chub. I went from six to noon. <laughs> That's why you went to the bathroom. That's exactly why he went to the bathroom. He was gone for a little while. Hey, man, homie's got to do what homie's got to do. Good. So I remember sitting at the boardroom table, my attorney, his attorney, and we're signing off on this company. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, no money down to buy it. What? Got the company, money in the bank that they left in the bank for me to be able to run the company, and it's 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 one of those things where it's that's not that's not supposed to happen. So like I have to pick my job. Like you see, like my mouth is yep. agape right now. No financing. Like we made it. We me and the owner, the ex owner, were really good friends, and we made it work. Um, but it's one of those things, man, where that doesn't happen a lot. And so if ever. you're taking the best opportunity and, and trying to make it the best that you can. But that's you got to hear the story that led up to wow. that. And there's so much more I want to do. You, you, defi- you definitely I can see like the wheels turn. And I don't mean that. In a, obviously, it's a very good thing. Like I see the wheels turning in your head. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. I was just telling viewers you, like. Carlos is an amazing human being. Fuck yeah, dude. Like I like I said, he's like my brother from another brother. You know what the biggest part is, though? And you're my Honestly. sister from another mister. Exactly. And you're my siblings from another mibling. So, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so my whole goal, like I know where I came from and where I'm at. Right. My whole goal is to help other people get discover that and get to that point, too. I love that. I love that. And, and that makes sense, too, why you can relate to their stories so much. Yep. Like that's just, it, it, it's so cool. Like I said, I didn't know anything about your background, but now hearing that and when I recoed that to you and you fucking binge watched it, that's, I'm now it makes sense why you binged it. The defiant She was ones. talking about what she's been consuming, yeah. which I which, guess leads us into the next I mean, part. yeah, that's, what I, are you that's consuming, really Ruben? all that I've been consuming was that, I mean, like I, I worked during the, you know what I mean? So like we met a week ago and we potted. So like I didn't I've been really, consuming work and life. I've been consuming life and music and well, of course, 90s. Duh. Sounds I mean, we're so going to talk more about more glorious that. than it is. Of course. But yeah. Well, That's, we are the inglorious bastards. Right. So. <laughs> right. But yeah, I mean, mostly what I, oh no, I do have to talk about one other thing. So again, the HBO, like free preview, mommy, dead and dearest. And this, I saw you post about that on Facebook. Holy fuck balls. Okay. So again, <laughs> this comes back to the true crime thing. <laughs> this comes back to the true crime thing. There there was this um this gal named Gypsy Rose. Oh wait. Check out my rock and tits gal. Showing her a comic of some sort. <laughs> Cyanide and what what are they? Cyanide and happiness. Thank you. Um <laughs> Damn it, Ruben. Um, if I'm good for anything, it's derailing. It's true. That's awesome. Um, mommy, Dad, and Dearest, though. It is, so you like true crime stuff, too. And you I swear you've he- had to hear about this case. This girl, Gypsy Rose. Sounds like a porn star. I, well, you would think so, right? <laughs> like, with that name, you would think that she was allegedly confined to a wheelchair. Or a small town stripper. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because there was a big, long-ass article that was TLDR on Facebook about this, like, a year ago or so. This is, like, two years ago. So she was, and I'm using air quotes as I'm saying this, confined to a wheelchair. She had leukemia. She had muscular dystrophy. She had all of these autoimmune deficiencies. She got dealt a really good hand in life. Right. Like, vision problems, all this shit. Well... All of a sudden, this fucking murder happens. Her mom gets murdered, like, viciously. Wait, the mother got murdered? The mom got murdered. I already know what's happening. Right, totally. Like, like throat slash, stab. Bitch is pretending. Go ahead. You are correct, sir. So Was it it, it Munchausen by by proxy? And this documentary, like, I've heard podcasts about this case before. What is it that you just said? Munchausen by proxy. What is that? It's where oh, like you're you like awful. You have a caregiver, like let's say like you and your mom. 
Okay. And your mom is so desperate for attention, she makes you sick. Whether or not you're yeah. truly sick, she just makes up all this shit. It's like psychologically sick. Yes. Do you remember at the a... beginning of The Sixth Sense? Or not, I'm sorry, not the beginning, but like that little girl who died in The Sixth Sense and like she pointed the kid like to this videotape. Right. And I jizzed that's... in my pants. <laughs> that's M- that's Munchausen's, Munchausen's by, by proxy. proxy. Basically, it's they want the attention, but they will do whatever they can to get that attention. So this woman, it, you come to find out that this this mom who was murdered, not only was she, was she fucking with her only daughter, she fucked with her mom. Really? Her mom, yeah. Mommy Dead and Dearest on HBO. It is fucked up. And basically, you come to learn out exactly what you like. You come to find out like. Her daughter had none of those illnesses. Her daughter had a fucking feeding tube. Never needed a feeding Whoa. tube. See, and here's the thing. Like, where... Did, who? Who documents like, these? Was That's it, what I want to know. Where were the doctors? Like, this, did the doctors do this shit? They or did talk, mom do it? They talk about all that shit, though, because it's really fucked up. Because same questions that you guys have, I was like, how the fuck does this happen? But it's Everybody because, should be sued for malpractice. Well... It's because the mom spoke for her and, and claimed she had mental oh. retardation, too. Wow. And they that's why, like, they never got anything from the daughter. It was always the mom speaking for her. And the drugs that they were administering to this girl. And it was the, came, the boyfriend of the, the daughter that killed the mom. Did it. Yep. Well, that's, well, the, should, yep. that's the long con right there. It is yeah, fucked up. Con. They got, like, the what are the, what's that? Um, the, the, the charity for kids, uh, Make-A-Wish Make Foundation. Make-A-Wish Foundation. They got fucking trips for that. They had houses built for them and all this shit. Like, it was fucked up. I will tell you, as, again, as a true crime fan, to get into that, they talked to the girl, too. They talked to Gypsy Rose, man. Like, And Eminem, Eminem actually accused his mom of Gypsy Munchausen Rose. by proxy. Well, can, you com- can you accompany that with Stockholm Syndrome? No. Um, St- no. Maybe no. a little bit. No, it's a different, total, totally different thing. Stockholm Syndrome is when you get kidnapped and you start to... You identify you with the identify with the kid. just kidnapped, but, you, but like you identify with the person who, who has attacked you, you or, or wronged you. Right, right. Like, th- there's cases of people who have been stalked who have, you know, Stockholm Syndrome. Um, but, but essentially, yeah, you always hear about it. Like Ruben was saying that he started to say with kidnapping cases, that was the, um, that's the reason why it's called Stockholm syndrome. There was a bank robbery. Yes. And thank you. So it, it, in Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bork, bork, bork. Um, well, that was like Patty Hearst again, like all the 20 odd listeners thank we got you, Sweden. in Sweden. Yeah. Bork, bork, bork. <laughs> Jake said the same thing when I said that to him. Making exactly. some good ass hot chocolate. <laughs> right. Make me some meatballs. Uh, <laughs> Playing those long ass horns. <laughs> Ricola. <laughs> and your fancy little That's shorts. That's all and your I cute know about hat. Sweden. Yes. Um, the Swedish chef and Ricola. <laughs> <laughs> We're we sorry, are Sweden. So we love you. Awful. <laughs> we love you, Sweden. But that's what I've been consuming. I promise you, watch that. You like Sword and Scale? You, oh, God. True Crime Garage, too. Podca- uh, talking about podcasting. Honey, I will send you all that shit. Like I said, I am a true crime podcast whore. This is the stuff that you will dig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will have to try and listen to that for sure. Oh, my God. Mid podcast with our favorite. Hello. Grixican. And this chick. Behind the <laughs> microphone. This, this one chick. <laughs> But yeah, that that's life. So that that's what I've been consuming this week. So now I will let you pass it over to Ruben home. in And typical now I got to pass the mic. What pop up? goulash <laughs> fashion. What have you been consuming, my good friend? Dude. So I've been listening to Honey Honey Band. Have you listened to Honey Honey yet? No, you sent dude. But, dude, when you sent that to me too the other day at work, it was really cute. I'm like, fuck, I have like three meetings in a row. I can't listen to this right now, and then I forgot. Dude, Honey Honey is amazing. Like, I still listen to Billy Jack. I need to listen to their third album, which is just called Three. I'm sorry, Honey Honey. I know you don't listen to this podcast, <laughs> but I'm sorry. Yet. Are they from the 90s? No, no, they're very contemporary. They're mm-hmm. just a. Uh, they're an Americana group out of Ohio. Okay. Well, you said it was awesome. Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah, I like... found him on Joe Rogan. Yeah. That's how I found him. Yeah. Americana equal folk rock? Mm, country More country more than country. anything, but more... Like, I love how... Alt like, rock. I wouldn't even call it that. I yeah. love how, like, more traditional country is now being called Americana. Right. Whereas... It, shut up. This, Seriously? This jizz fest that is country music 
is really country rock. Yeah. I'm going to piss all over those records. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Everything that is like more uh, traditional in the vein of country, more like Hank and Willie and all of that. That's oh, more I love Ameri- those guys. Those, Me too. It's all considered more Americana if it's produced by somebody contemporary. So like Ryan Adams would be considered Americana with some rock. And I think he's... <clears throat> And you're right, because I think he's been kind of lumped into that category right. anyway. And say, like, Chris Shiflett from the Foo Fighters, his solo stuff is Americana. Dude, really? I'm telling you, Chris Shiflett's first so- or most recent album is called, like, Hollywood Land or something like that, or Wild West Town. Wild West Town. Fucking phenomenal record. We did, yeah. That before, we too. talked about it. Yeah. It's an excellent Americana record. Interesting. Absolutely excellent Americana record. Hmm. It's a country record. And it's excellent. But I like that Wheeler stuff. Walker Jr. Really? Dude. Kicking beer. Or drinking. What, what's the song? Uh, sucking dick. No, no, no. Drinking beer with my <laughs> fucking no, 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 friends. No, 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 no. Oh. His album, is, he's got a song <laughs> called uh, Eating Pussy and Kicking Ass. I love him already. Dude, what? Hus- Dude, your, your husband, tur- your producer Jake, turned me on to Wheeler Walker Jr. He also really? the one that wrote uh, Kicking Pussy and Eating Ass? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That's on his third yet untitled album. Eating <gasps> pussy, kicking TBD ass, which is funny because I, I I was talking to House about Wheeler Walker Jr. because like at the very end of the song he's got like the third verse of the song he's like I picked up a lady and paid her the money. <laughs> oh my god! And she pulled down her pants and she had a dick, but I already paid, so sucking dick. Then I kicked his ass, <laughs> <laughs> sucking dick and kicking ass, dude. Wheeler Walker Jr. is hilarious, but it's really traditional. It's written. Oh tra- my God. The look on Dana's face is just like, what the fuck? Holy fuck. Yeah. All I can think of is boys don't cry like the movie. When I hear that shit, I'm like, oh. but it's it's not in that like horrific. I'm okay. going to beat your ass. It's not in that. It's it's an e- oh. dude. He still sucked his dick. He just kicked his ass afterwards. <laughs> like, how can you be mad at somebody for like kicking your ass if you, he sucked your dick? I mean, really? It's true. But like, there's a whole song about like how he loves this woman so much that he wants to fuck his dad, fuck her dad in the ass, and fuck her whole family. <laughs> like, seriously, that's love right there, dude. Like, right, right, like that's solid love right there, dude. It is, dude. Wheeler Walker Jr. is the shit. His first album, I, I think it's just Wheeler Walker Jr. and his second album is called Old Wheeler. Dude, it's good stuff. It's on Apple Music. It's fucking awesome. Okay. So, but I've been listening to Honey Honey Band, and I love. Honey, Honey Band. I know you do. And it, they're just called Honey, Honey, but they're on Twitter. I think they're called Honey, Honey Band. Okay. But like, I love those guys. They are fucking excellent. Like, check them out. The dude, the yeah, chick sure. that sings. Um, she. Both of my guests are coming out with solo albums this year, and like, wow. their singer is just she's just amazing. So is it like a nod to classic country then? The the yeah, band feel. It's yeah, a good I mean, it's more it's more country than pop. That's for good. Sure. So I like would it that. be like Gillian Welch when she would team up with Ryan Adams, if you're I've, familiar? I've never heard. There's, I know we talked about this pr- on the last pod or the pod before, before you got all wasted on whiskey, um, <laughs> which I love that Down episode. That is seriously viral. is one of my favorite episodes of Pop Goulash ever. Because at really? the beginning, Dana's like, yes, I truly enjoyed this album. By the end, it was like, you, look, look here. I got to with the... You, I'm not drinking anymore. Pour me another glass of And I kept repeating the fuck out of things, and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, it was so good. It was my favorite episode <laughs> thus far. You're like, hey, I love you. You I love, you, I love you, man. I love you, man. I, you, <laughs> hey, I'm glad to be back, bitches. <laughs> I'm glad. It's Listen the, to li- me. Li- li- you, 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 you drunky. Look, you, look. There's a message on your phone. Is your phone dying, by the way? And then, like, some random question. Do you like wallpaper? Because <laughs> I love it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so, yeah. Shit. So, I've been listening to a lot Sorry, of Honey, I didn't Honey mean Band. To cut it off. But no, no, no. It's all good. Honey, I'm Honey. Post those. <laughs> yeah, Honey, Honey is fan- fantabulous, dude. I love those guys so, so fucking much. I got Tori Amos tickets. This I know. Week. Yeah, look, look, we ain't talking about you. Who is that? I don't care. Tori <laughs> I'm Amos still fucking interjecting, and I get to see Rachel in two weeks. Does I she know. play piano? Yes. Yes. And she's from Iceland. No, no that's you're thinking of you're Bjork. Thinking of Bjork. <laughs> Bjork. Bjork. Yes, and I don't believe Bjork plays piano. I don't know if Bjork plays anything. Um. So I've been listening to that. Still listening to the new Heim. 
Nice. Dude, have you listened to that yet? No, I have not. What the factual fuck? Don't give me shit for it, dude. Dude. I've been consuming other things. Well, you should consume- I have it. I downloaded it. You should consume what I tell you to consume. (laughs) Fuck you. You should consume what I tell you to fucking consume. I do, bitch. Uh Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it. Bring it. Come across the table. go out Mm -hmm. and fight by the bike racks after Slap me in the face with your titties. Come on. (laughs) Please, God. They're not Africa titties anymore. Someone help. Can't really do that. (laughs) Girls is caught in the crossfire. I know. He's like holding up a flag like (laughs) SOS. SOS. So again, like, because it was, it's only been like five days since we recorded last but so i'm still listening to to radiohead's okay computer the remastered version so good they do the same thing they did last time where they just put it on the internet and you donate whatever you can no 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 no. this is actually they took okay computer and just remastered it okay gotcha. and then they they put all like all the b-sides and a couple live tracks and shit like that but dude still that is like it's a high watermark for better technology years later equals a better sound essentially ish Okay. Yeah. But you got to think, call. and I was thinking about it when I was listening to this. Like, this, okay, computer was recorded in 97. Okay. Pro Tools. Computer. I think just kind of started. I, think I don't know when Pro time. Tools really came into, uh, into I think effect. Like the very Everything early 2000s. In its right place. That was actually, in, that was Kid A, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. All right. You know, whatever. I think it was like the very early 2000s where you started to hear about the Pro Tools shit. Hey, Siri. <laughs> When was pro? God damn it! Just type that shit in. Son. Siri's like, you know what? She's like, Fuck I'm done face, being son. your bitch. Exactly. She's like, I fucking hate you. When was Pro Tools invented? Here's what I found on the web for when was Pro Tools invented. You know, he always says, "You this wanker." Is, this is when I found it was invented. You read it. Fuck you, Siri. That's well, what I'm asking you. Let's see. Hey Siri. Dude, everybody's phone is all like, hey. Is Ruben I'm awesome? On, <laughs> I'm looking on Wiki. Oh, wow. Actually, crazy. 89. 89. But uh, I really feel like it didn't come into like prevalence until like the aughts. It was. That, exactly. That's when you really, because the interwebs really took off then. Right. Like, that's when you really started to hear about a lot of so that I, shit. So I want to feel, I want to say, I cannot say this with any definitive or education, but I want to say that OK Computer was recorded more traditionally than most records. I would imagine so. And, well, like, Are you talking and analog? Analog. Maybe some digital mixed in with it, but I want to say that it was really recorded, for the most part, in, in an analog-type format. It's impressive. And, um, but just the way that it was, like I said when we talked last, it was right. just the way that it was layered and the way that the music was just... Which was like your jam for that, yeah. Yeah, it, it was, you know, I called it the, the Sergeant Pepper's, but I would also call it, <laughs> I would also call it their Dark Side of the Moon as well. I think you kind of mentioned, maybe I did not, not mention Dark Side. Not on the podcast, yeah. but I think you had mentioned that to me off. Yeah, but it's very much their Dark Side of the Moon as well, where like the recording techniques and the things that they were doing in the studio was so like beyond what anybody else had ever done in the studio thus far. So that's, you know, and again, it's one of those albums where just like you listen to it and you're like, how the fuck did they do that? And then you like, like me, I saw them live and I'm like, how the fuck are they doing that? And granted, I realize that a lot of stuff is recorded to tape and Dana's chugging and well, stuff. No, I'm trying to get the, like the little, but the sippy cup kind of doesn't help. That. Yeah. The, the, the last drink or so. No, you're not. You liar. Oh no. You're a fucking liar. I have to drive. Yeah. That's what Uber's for. <laughs> you just leave your car in my driveway. Just leave it's your fine. car in the driveway. That's fine. We don't have to work tomorrow. As long as I can get out and drive the kids to school, we're good to go. And, and I, I can might... take either of the two cars. Shh, I might not go to work tomorrow, too. <laughs> <laughs> I already decided that like five hours ago. But anyway. And nobody from work listens to your podcast. Exactly. Except so. for John. Hi, work husband. Hi. Except the CEO. Right. <laughs> right. So, but I. I ring that bitch. Right. So. Shut your fucking volume on your phone off, dude. Jeez, that's podcasting 101. What the fuck? Anyway, but it's one of those <laughs> where, like... <laughs> I am such a cocksucking asshole. Um, I mean... <laughs> but that's why you love me. Exactly. <laughs> but it was one of those where, like, I, I just totally lost... Thanks, Carlos. I totally lost my train of thought. No, but it's a, you were talking about <laughs> the album and, and why you continue to listen yeah, to that album. Yeah, and it's just one of those where it's still... 20 years after that album was released, it still blows me away to listen to it, to think that not only for, like, 
when you listen to it for the very first time, right. you're like, holy shit, they were able to pull all this off. And like I said, I got to see them live, and they pulled it all off. And that's where I was going with it. Right. I know a lot of stuff live, like David Crowder Band. Yeah. There's so much stuff going on 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 a David Crowder Band album that they can't pull it off live without tapes. Well, or, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in, right? Sure. <laughs> and that Holy Spirit is also called a, uh, a compact disc. Yeah. <laughs> but they have... But they have like pre-recorded <laughs> bits that like when they're when they're playing the production team is you know you have to loop that shit in they're looping it right. and and to to make that sound happen again and I'm sure Radiohead did the same thing Imogen Heap does that I think a lot of a artists lot of bands do that, that song by yeah. Imogen Heap which one hide and seek yeah yeah, yeah. it's an amazing song you need to listen to the whole album though never heard it oh my um, god again not talking about you talking about me. <laughs> And, <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, like they had to have pulled some of that stuff because er, they had to have done that because that's the only way that you can do it. Well, but right. still, they were able to pull it off live. And like I said, they did every song on the album minus one, which was my favorite song. And replicate record. it live. They were able to produce it live. Wow. It was amazing. Amazing. And where did you see them at? Rosemont again? Theater. That's right. Which is like 5,000 people at the most. Yeah. Didn't it used to be called the Rosemont Horizon? No, no, no. Horizon is the Allstate of, Arena. Right. Oh, yep. okay. Gotcha. The theater, the theater is. The on Des Plaines River Road. It's like not far from the It's like a casino. mile and a half from the actual Horizon. It's, it's gotcha. right down the street from the uh, convention center. Yeah. It's like a block away the from there. The Ronald E. Stevens? Yes. Yes. Where I yes. went to the Wizard World Comic Con twice, and mm. both times it was just like, meh. Isn't that where... No. Never mind. Anyway, go on. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. That was really insightful. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I'm like, isn't that where... No, 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 no. It was... Uh... Jane, you ignorant slut. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Dwight, you ignorant <laughs> slut. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I've been listening to that. But then... Oh, my God. So, I'm going to preface this with saying I wish that bands would stop taking everything that I hate in music... And making me like what they're doing with it. Because now I'm questioning my whole existence, whether wondering whether or not maybe I actually like this shitty, shitty, shit, shit in music. You probably do. Oh, my God. So. Is this. Are you saying you like Morrissey now? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I thought you were going. No. That was fan fucking tastic. Oh, yes. I would much rather take 12 dicks than listen to Morrissey. Ooh. Note to our listeners, by the way, that's the Ruben challenge. <laughs> Don't make a gif of that. Please do. <laughs> Brian, don't. Brian, please. It's pronounced giffy peanut butter. <laughs> Get with it. Anyway, so on, I want to say it was Thursday. <laughs> Fuck you. Is this the longest what are you consuming ever? <laughs> no, actually, oh, it's, not. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> My cheekbones hurt from laughing. Y'all can go fuck yourselves. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go on. I'm out. Now, anyway, so I, I received a text message. I want to say it was Thursday. Had to have been Thursday. From Eli. And he had texted me a link through Amazon Music, but I don't use Amazon Music. Uh, Who but does? you have Prime. I do. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, but I have Apple Music. So, uh, like, I, why? Do, I, I, do I, too. I, I hate the fact that I've got like fifteen different. I'm, I like the radio station better on the Amazon Prime, like music app. All right, let's say this. I don't have unlimited data because oh, that's right, so that's right, that's right, that that's means right. nothing because you use ninety eight percent of it between you and Kirsten. Right, dude. At least right. somebody listens to a fucking podcast. Thank you. Aside from my podcast partner, who sits across like two feet away from me through Fuck the whole fucking episode, your face <laughs> because with twelve you could dicks swap right with twelve, with 12 dicks, dicks listening to Morrissey and the Smiths at the same time. Sword fight right in my mouth. <laughs> mm. Please, please, please let me, let me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> oh my homer doesn't work no. No. they've got pills for that by the way <laughs> it's called the little blue pill, which is covered by insurance as opposed to yeah you know yeah virus covered by insurance that's why like people that are like 
when the whole Hobby Lobby thing went down, when they wouldn't oh, pre- do yeah. like prescription oh, birth control. I remember that's that. That's why like everybody got all pissed off about it. It's because like, yeah, your dick pills are covered, but you know, the things that help my ovaries from not murdering me every month. Right. Yeah, fuck you guys. Things that I need. I'm actually going to go tinkle now, so you keep talking. So wait, I want you to hear this though. Okay. It's important. It's not really important, but I just like but having that control over But you're just an egotistical fuckface, so yeah, it's cool. And, and, dude, 23 episodes in and over 20 years of friendship, and you're just figuring this out now. Oh, no, I promise you I didn't just figure this out. <laughs> so Eli sent me a text about, of this group called uh, Deantward. And I've seen the name, D-I-E-A-N-T-W-O-O-R-D. Oh, I've... Okay. Deantward. Di- uh, in America, it's die ant word. But, yeah. But it's pronounced D as in because they're foreign. Ant- right. Ant word. And he, he sent me this fucking link and I'm like, all right. But it didn't have a song title on it. So I just went to Apple Music and downloaded the album. This album's fucking incredible. Hmm. It is. How would you describe it? I'm right. I'm formulating that. It is hip hop. I'm all right. Yep. Rave. Check. Um, Half check. Euro trash. Okay, it's Half down check. to zero now. <laughs> um, let's see. What else? Um, he, there's humor ishness. Like, like tongue in cheek. Yeah. Like, like creative puns. Not, no, not even in that sense. <laughs> That's yeah. That's what I would wonder. But like, okay, I will play you some. And the album is Mount Ninji and the Nice Time Kid. Ooh, I like that. And like, it's one of those things. It's kind of like how I describe Twenty One Pilots, where like they mashed up a bunch of shit that I really fucking hate and made something that I really enjoy. Hmm. So let's hear. Fuck you, Ruben. Oh no, I mean, I mean, fuck you, because that got me a little bit interested all right, in that. All right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Track two. Please don't sue us. One thing that I've learned is that if we're doing it in a critical sense, as if we're reviewing, fair game. You still can't play the whole fucking song. Well, no, and we're not on SoundCloud because SoundCloud is dead. Did you hear about that? Yeah, bye, SoundCloud. Yeah, SoundCloud's got about a a month left, and they're pulling everything down. What? Yeah. I don't know what happened, but they've lost everything. They're done. You better go buy your own server. Oh, my God, Lady Miss Keir. They'll find some. fucking Delight. I hope she puts her shit somewhere somewhere else. Come on over to LibSynth, right? Yep. Right. Oh, my God. I like it. But I don't like that voice shit. But it works in the context of what they're doing. For this, yeah. You know what this reminds me of? This is the shit that I hate. That I wait love till now. it drops. Yeah, it reminds it's me. It's total Euro trash. of my dance club fucking days and my taking a bunch of fucking ecstasy pills at Crowbar in Chicago days. See, I never had those days. Oh my god! I had my taking a bunch of ecstasy listening to Fish days, oh. which is a totally different scene, but very similar in some ways. Psycho bitch! When I used to see her spin live at oh, Crowbar. Yeah. But, like, it's total Euro trash. There's trap music on here. And they're... Okay, and I wanted to bring this up, and I wanted to ask you two about this. Okay. So, they are... It's a duo. They're married. It is uh, Yolinda, which is the chick, and Ninja, the dude. And... Is he black? No, neither of them are. But... Well, they're probably, like, Swedish or Norwegian or some shit. They're South African. So, on this album, 
they drop the N-word a few times. Now, here's the thing. They're white, but they're from Africa. So they're African. Does that make it okay? I think so. I think it's a cultural thing. I think you you know what honestly Carlos and if I they moved to the United States if they moved here and took up residency and got became citizens they would they technically would be African American they w- <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fucking true it's and you know true, it's true but exactly what you said it's the fucking cultural thing that's what it is because we assign not but, but us the thing, necessarily. Well, but here's the deal: the N word is used universally in the same way. Absolutely. So how would it be culturally? different in south africa where racism is way way fucking worse than it was here i mean hell it's only been 20 years that black people have been about where we are though right now and and how it's i don't want to get on that political fucking landscape it's not political this is social this is social i'd say music influences culture though it comes out of that culture yes yes so i i so poppers i want to hear your thoughts on this i want to see what you say because i'm gonna go piss Yep. Okay. So. No, you're good. No, Kirsten's up there. Oh. So yeah, I mean, it's just interesting mm. to me that like, you mustard, know, onions, ham sandwich. <laughs> but no, it, it's one of those where I was. I found it very interesting that they don't. They there was like, there's one like interlude track where they drop the N word a few times, and I'm like, that's really weird that they did that. With but then the again, AS on the end or the AZ on the end. Yeah, just the A, not the hard R. Right. Gotcha. Not the hard R. So it's like it's weird to hear that coming from two white people, but they're Africans, so I mean they're technic you know, it's it's weird. But like they, You can't really tell that though with the rapping. No, no, I didn't e- not I, at I all. didn't even know until like I That's why I asked you if he was he was black, not to be stereotypical, but No, but homeboy sounds it sounded like, like a black dude. Yeah. yeah. And like I'm listening to it and like the, I didn't even I, I knew the chick was white. I knew that, but I didn't know that the dude was black. A dude, well, dude, he wasn't black. I didn't know the guy was an African. <laughs> these 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 black African Americans. No, I didn't know that he was he was an African dude. Or I knew that they were African. I didn't know that he was a white. Sorry, I've had beers. I didn't know that he was a white guy until like I googled him and saw pictures of them. Did you know where he was or he was from before that? I knew they were from Africa. Yeah. Yeah, or South Africa. I'm sorry. Africa is not a country. It's a continent, and it irritates the shit out of me when somebody... Oh, they're from Africa. Africa is a country. No, it's not George W. Bush. Africa is a continent, <laughs> you stupid fuck. God, I, I, I wish you know, it was back. It reminds me a little bit of Girl Talk. A little bit of Daft Punk. Yeah, it's got some of that in some there. Some of those elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that game Dance Dance Revolution. DDR, yeah, yeah. for sure. Because it's all that shitty like... <laughs> And like I said, um, let me write that down. The name of the band again. Die Antwoord. D-I-E-A-N-T-W-O-O-R-D. It it means something in Afrikaans. Which is interested to hear what people think of it on the podcast. Yeah, so seriously, guys, like comment on the podcast page, send us a voicemail or whatever. I'm curious to hear what you guys, one, think of this group, and two, I'm curious to hear what y'all think of like... You know, what your thoughts are as far as the uh, using the N-word, but yet they're also, you know, they're white folks, but they're from Africa, but they use the N-word a couple times on this record. It's interesting. Is it possible to put a link up there of the song, one of the songs? Uh, Yeah, I can figure it out. Awesome. Yeah, I can figure it out. So, but yeah, it's it's a great record, dude. The whole album is fire. The beats are insane on this album. Yeah, here they are. Yeah. Yeah, they're the ugliest white people I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. Dude's got a flat top. He does. He's totally got like a G.I. Joe flat top. He looks like Duke from G.I. Joe. Have you seen any live videos or just the audio? No, I've just seen the audio. I've got to piss now. <laughs> Dana's back. Welcome back. <laughs> so so what Welcome were you back, talking Cotter. about? Thank you, sir. We were talking about the... I was telling him that the band sort of reminded me a little bit of Daft Punk. Yes, yes, I saw them live before. A little bit of Lollapalooza. Girl Talk. Have you ever listened to them? I have not. A so Girl not Girl familiar. Talk's a mashup band. Okay. So they take all these like, um, um, they take this song that's shit. Why am I blanking right now? It's okay. Black <laughs> Sabbath. Okay. War Pigs. So they take that song, really? and then they mix it up with. Uh, here, I'll play it for you really quick. Yeah. Right. It's it's amazing. I love it. And he, and he was right. I'm going to have some more wine. 
Do you want another beer? Um, possibly. Okay. You want some whiskey instead? Hell no. <laughs> Don't go down that rabbit hole. That was so, a quick piece. Ruben, huh? I'm getting ready to just play so, a little bit of... On. Wait, I just, pi- I, I just pissed in my sump pump. And it's... <laughs> And it was nowhere near as satisfying as uh, pissing. When whiskey talks. Yeah, it just wasn't as satisfying. Oh, my God. I almost peed on myself again. Yeah, see? Yep, yep, yep. See? Aren't you? Th- you're welcome. God yeah, but I touched it. my dick, and I know where it's been. In my pants, because that's the only Still, place it is in. You're lucky that I have the anti-back here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you playing? Uh, a little bit of girl talk, because... Not familiar. She was not familiar with them. I told them that it's like a mashup band. But uh, when I play a little bit of it, you'll kind of hear what I was talking about. I've just got to bring it up, so give me one second. It's all good. So, yeah, still, I, I, so as far as, like, TV and stuff is concerned, I've been uh, finally caught up to Orphan Black. Oh, God, okay. I love that show. My so friend good. likes that show a lot, I, Well, too. I told you, like, with the, the geneticist stuff and the, the medical stuff, dude, you would be into it. You said seriously, like, and then there's, like... It's not true crime, but there's a crime element in it as well as I far really as like that shit, though. murdery shit yeah. and like death and destruction and you're so fucking goth and emo and bought it and whatever. <laughs> but it's not that. And I don't even dress that. That's the funniest part. Like, I am so into that shit and nobody would ever be able to fucking tell. <laughs> never. You'd never be able to tell. So, but yeah, like, seriously, just jump on Amazon Prime this afternoon. Kick Jake off the TV and just watch it for... I've even got my iPad so I can watch it on my Dude, seriously, yeah. watch like the first two episodes. If you're not hooked by the second episode, then fuck it. It ain't for you. Challenge but it's, accepted. It's fucking excellent. Okay. So, and like I said, they're they're doing five episodes and they're out. Or five seasons, I'm sorry. That's and then okay. they're out. Uh, so I did catch, you know, I'm catching up. I, I've actually, actually, no, I'm not caught up. I got two episodes left to watch. So there's that. And I've been watching Preacher. Dude, Preacher is so good. Yeah. I was going to say, you inspired me to... Dude, preachers don't watch that fuck. show. Have you seen Night Shift? No. Night. They. I, I think they're on their third oh, season. The Night Shift. Night Shift. Yeah. Not even. Not even. <laughs> El, or uh, Lionel Richie. Um, <laughs> Commodores. It, same fucking difference. No. What, Lionel Richie wasn't in the like in the band at that time or group really? whatever at that time. Yeah. Looking on the night shift. Yeah. Interesting. I, I, did I not thought know the that. same thing though wait, too at first. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Working on our night moves. The night moves is different. That's okay. um. That was uh, Bob Seger's Silver Bullet you. Band, but they weren't working on the night moves. I don't believe they were I don't working know. on the night shift. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, if I can get this up and running, I'll. It's sure. all good. Let just, you know. just pitch in. Just we'll, we'll treat you like the producer Jake. We'll just Thank talk you over very you. Much. <laughs> so, but no. So I've been watching Night Shift. Is like, and I think I told Jake about it a while ago, but I think they're in their third, possibly fourth season. It's one of those summer shows where they do like. 13 episodes. Is it on like USA or something? No, 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 no. It's actually, it's on, uh, it's on NBC. Really? Yeah. And it is a, it's a hospital drama, but. ER-ish. It, ish. But it's set in like every, all of the doctors for the most part are all um, vets. They're or active or oh. they're either active or retired military. Oh, okay. So they're all vets for one in one sense or the other. I told you weren't done with the wine. I know you were right. Slarty Bart fast. <laughs> so yeah, so they're all part of the like military and stuff, and it's just it's a hospital drama. But huh. like recently the last two seasons have had um Oh god damn it, I know her name. Uh Flash Dance. Jennifer Beals. She's been in the last two seasons. Really? Yeah, she's like an army medical doctor. I love her, dude. Anyway. And she's great in that. She was awesome and in she's the L still word. Hot, dude. Did you see her in the L word? Yes. Sweet. She's fucking hot, dude. Seriously. I'm like, I would lick your titties. I would go farther than and that. probably lick your box too. Yeah, dude. <laughs> So uh-huh. Jennifer Beals. Oh. I heard the word titties and had to come back in. <laughs> Carlos like literally ran. I heard him <laughs> running back to the chair. He's like titties. I heard titties. Mm, damn some sweet titties. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh shit. Some people call them titties. I call them titties. Mm-hmm. So, but no, she's in it. She's been in the last two seasons. Um. Like, one of the main doctors went to Fallujah or some shit. So he's, like, they, they cut between, like, I think it's a, it takes place in Austin. Okay. Oh! 
Austin. So they take place in some like weird Austin, Massachusetts. (laughs) Yes. Well, no, actually, it's Austin, British Columbia. So, but (laughs) it takes place in like Texas somewhere. I think it's Austin. I could be wrong. I don't know. But um, uh, like it takes place here and then overseas as well. Okay. And like every every season, somebody gets deployed somewhere. So they follow them as they get deployed. Sounds like my friends in real life when that shit was. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean was is? Well. Not so much now because I'm not. We're not of that age group where people are. Yeah, we're too old to go anywhere. <laughs> I mean, like, I yeah. I'm so glad that I'm out of the, uh, out of the uh, selective Draft service age. age. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, eighteen year olds. Your government doesn't give a fuck about you. Not so much. But either way, uh, but it's a good show. It's a really, really hmm. good show. It's on NBC. It's on okay. like I don't even know what night it is. We DVR it. Okay. But it's one of the few shows that like Kirsten and I can actually agree upon. <laughs> okay. Here's 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 the thing. So, I would hold on. Please hold. I wish I could uh, better articulate the fucking um, Jeopardy music, but it's not working right now. Do you like some elevator music? That's so not the password. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I asked him for the password to the oh, Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi, and I said your mom's titties. Yeah, that's definitely not the password. But yeah, no, it's it's a it's a great show. I would definitely I would highly recommend it to uh, to anybody out there. It's 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 just one of those it's just one of those shows that's just a decent show to watch. Sure. So. Hmm. But that's that's what I've been consuming lately. I saw, dude, I watched Twenty Eight Days Later again last night. God, I haven't seen that in a long time. The new zombie outbreak where they're really really quick. And Twenty fast. Twenty Eight Days Later was released what ten twelve years ago, if not 2003. more. Two thousand three. Was it? God, was it that long ago? Yep. It was, I mean, right? Like it was like a. I haven't seen it in probably oh. ten years. Yeah, it's it's on HBO right now, so that's why. I, or no, it, Cinemax is free this week too. So wait a sec, no, because yes. I wasn't fucking able to get it on my. You I have s- Comcast? Yeah, but I, I have it. I, I promise you, I fucking tried, and I'm like, try on demand. What? Try the, the on demand. demand. Yes, okay. because 20, that's how it popped up on us. But was 28 days later? Was that the Jake Gyllenhaal? No. No. What am I thinking? Killian of? Murphy. Killian Murphy. I don't know who that is. He's the beautiful Scottish actor with the blue oh, eyes. Oh, with the blue eyes in the in the bowl cut hair. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Well, he kind of had a bowl. No. Like, he had, his hair came down to, like, here. Yeah, I mean, it was shaggy. and One side was shaved, well, and you got I to see his cock at the cut. beginning of the movie. Yeah, I mean, that didn't do it for me. Unfortunately. I was like, yeah. Um, okay, I got it. But it's kind of like a, a zombie movie. It is a zombie movie. Yeah. So, yeah, but in my reading... As I was watching it, because I can't just watch movies anymore. I have to go on IMDb and fucking, I know because like, you're an elitist everything. motherfucker. I'm not elitist. I just like to know about Can't what I'm watching. Shit. Are you the type of person that can see a person in one movie and say, "Oh yeah, they were in this, 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 and this movie"? Yeah, kind of. I can play the Seven Degrees of Kevin Bacon pretty easily. <laughs> I do that in my or personal Six Degrees life of Kevin from a Bacon. music fucking standpoint. I though. can. I can. I, I used to be able to do that too, but now I'm not smart enough to do it anymore. Okay, so this is girl talk. I want your honest, honest. And feedback. then we'll go yes, back. I want to hear. Why are they ripping off Black Sabbath? He told me about this. It's a matchup. Hit me. Generals gathered in their masses. Just like witches. Ludacris, too? Evil minds of blood destruction. This room plays the air guitar. This is interesting enough for me to listen to more of that. Okay, here's the breakdown. Keep playing. I'm just texting the husband back. So what do you think of that? They took one song and combined it with another song and kept the same rhythm and drums and everything else. It was else. interesting. It was interesting. I don't know if I like it, but it's I interesting. I like it. All right. Well, well. I actually do like it, and it's v- it, it's interesting enough to me to explore more of it. You just have to go slow, that's all, and relax. <laughs> that's what she said. And lots of lube. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. you took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. Just lay back and relax. 
But th- there was another one that I posted on the Pop Goulash page. It was Crazy Train with something else, and it was wonderful. And I can't remember what it oh, was. God, what was that mashup? Um, I don't remember. I love Crazy Train, by the way. Yeah, it was it was something that like I know lots it was of like crazy the Golden trains. Girls theme song or something. It was like <laughs> two Thank things you for that, being a friend. It was like two <laughs> things that should never have been put together, and it was like holy fuck, that actually works. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. <laughs> Dude, a buddy and if of mine threw a party. My <laughs> homie Christos was all like, like totally like stoked that his girls could, his one daughter could name two of the four Golden Girls off of his T-shirt. It's like <laughs> that's dope. Oh, that and he awesome. has a fucking T-shirt on top of it. I aspire to own the T-shirts. Dude, there's You're a thing. Together, I, there's right? a ton. now. There's this thing called the interweb. Oh, I know that I'm sure that if you go, there's a thing called the Googles, and if you go on the Googles, and you can put the words in, and it'll tell you where you can buy things. <laughs> it's fantastic. Golden Girls shirt. Cheap. And they also make like um not votive candles, but there was those those Catholic Yes, the Catholic oh, fucking candles. Dude, seriously, uh Eli was trying to find one for me, but apparently after MCA died, one of the bodegas in Brooklyn had one of them with MCA on it. I'll you, see if I can find anything when I'm in I, town I in a couple doubt weeks. It, but dude, I would so love to have one you of those. You never know. I'm probably not going to be going to Jersey when I'm there. I'm just not going to have time. Mm, it's all good. But uh, I will definitely go to... I already told Rob that I want to go to the, the park. The park. So. Yeah, the Adam Yow yeah. Park. Oh, Speaking yeah. of candles, if you ever... There's a company called Serenity Candles by Serenity Jan. now! Serenity Candles by Jan. Yeah. Not familiar. That's a nod to a certain sitcom. So if you can, what's that? Wait, The Office. Yes. (laughs) Now it's all coming back to me. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) uh, Are you? You're but. What you got, my friend? All right. So. Yeah, I remember when you told me about this. So, Kevin Smith did. There, he he owns a a comic book store called The Secret Stash, where comic book men, the TV show. Rob's been there. Yeah, I'm sure. But so they're doing a they're, this year's their 20th anniversary and they did uh, a promotion where I'm holding the box in my hand. It's the Jane Silent Bob Secret Stash 20th anniversary, 97 to 2017. God damn it. It's been 20. Sounds like Grayson's crying about something upstairs. Is it? A little yeah, bitch. So. <laughs> <laughs> he'll listen to this and he'll hate me in his 20s, but whatever. I love that kid. Um, so uh, they came out with a candy, a, a chocolate medallion, if you will. And they were running this promotion, kind of a golden ticket promotion where I remember you could you possibly get a golden ticket in there. And right. you could w- get a speaking role on Jay and Silent Bob That's Reboot. awesome. God damn it. How cool would yeah. that be? Unfortunately, Seriously. so I bought one. It was 20 bucks, whatever. Fuck it. And uh, as you can see up on my wall, I got an autographed ticket. Uh, Postcard? Postcard. Postcard with Kevin yep. Smith autographed it personally. Not person- personally to me, but he personally autographed yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, so we got a chocolate. So I'm going to share that chocolate with you, bitch. Oh, you're wow. so cute. Thank you. You guys get to share a half, and I get the other half. No, that's totally fine by me. I don't eat sweets, really. Well, whatever. I'm a fat fuck, so I got to eat. You're not <laughs> a fat fuck. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my good friend. Because <laughs> I love you, bitches. Well, I love you, too. And that's some delicious ass chocolate. It's actually pretty fucking good chocolate, too. It reminds me of Christmas. <laughs> I know, right? Like the little Santa like or foil Easter. wraps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dude, I remember Thank for you. whatever reason getting like, when I was kind of getting them. And they were always like the dark chocolate. My mom always got me dark chocolate. Really? Yeah, my mom hated me, though. So that's <laughs> one of the things. <laughs> my like, mom fuck did... you, Ruben. I'm my... high and I'm getting you dark chocolate or carob. Dude. Oh, carob's the uh, fucking worst. 90% cacao chocolate. Oh. Dude, at least that's delicious. This is really good. But, like, if you're, really look, good. if you're a parent and you're buying your kids carob, go fuck yourself. Okay? Because carob is like the ass rape of chocolate. <laughs> I almost spit my chocolate out on the fucking pop filter. It is. It's like, <laughs> it's gritty. And grainy. It's awful. And tastes like somebody jizzed in your face. My mom never bought me dark, dark chocolate until I turned 20. And then it was like, you're past the age where you can have milk chocolate, so I'm going to buy you this shitty dark chocolate. I'm like, Deb, Deb, what did I ever do Dude, to you? she just knew that you liked it dark, like your men. Well, I mean, duh. Can we go, can we, can we go back just for one second? Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Did you say it tastes like someone jizzed on your face? <laughs> I know. Yes. I was stuck on that for a second, too. I was like, mm, do I do I talk about that? <laughs> do I talk about that? Because you're right. It does, oh Carlos. <laughs> Very I don't know what accurate. it would. I don't know what it would taste like if somebody had jizzed on my face, but I figure it would, would you just like be the description as, of what it tastes like. Figured at least one of us at the table would know. <laughs> and I'm looking in your direction, Dana. Yeah, do you want the description of what that tastes like? It's definitely not gritty or grainy. No, it's usually kind of salty, it's just warm, very and kind of hot, salty, and very um, coagulated. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> dude, almost I got s- like the whites of an egg, and it's but worse. they're not cooked. Yeah, like, dude. When you're trying to cook a sunny side up <laughs> egg. And, like, the whites don't totally get fucking cooked. Dude. That's what cum is like on your face as a woman. Do you know what? That's what it's wow. like. I got snowballed one time. So I know. It was the worst thing ever. Do you see this expression? What? Yeah, dude. I got snowballed one time. Do I know who did it? You do. Is it who I think it is? I'm pretty sure it probably oh, is. Come on, dude, come she on. was married. Dude, yeah, dude. Dude, freaks, man. I mean, I, I'm Not the one of... you lived with. No, no, no. That's not who I'm thinking. The other one. Yeah. I'm kind of fucking freaky. That never happened in my life. Yeah, dude. It snowballed me. It's the worst. Like, it, and it, w- it would have been one thing if, like, it was agreed upon kind of thing. It was, like, snuck up on me. I was like, <coughs> Lana, what the fuck are you doing? She's like, I don't know. I thought you liked it. I'm like, Did you like some really Spearmint Chew after that? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you guys have a great week. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> it's wow. been great, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Carlos is like, dude. He had no idea what he signed up for today. Nope. <laughs> when I'm in the room, it's a little bit different. <laughs> That's the title of the episode. I got snowballed. <laughs> done go. and done. <laughs> the snowball from hell. Holy shit, Snap, yeah, son. Dude, that bitch was crazy. Oh, my. I'm just so glad you didn't marry her. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't Thank marry God. her. Thank God. Yeah, dude. That Seriously, bitch would cray cray. Fucking ask permission on that shit. Right? I mean. Seriously. That's you don't like just bring that on a, a well, motherfucker. Same thing as if you're trying to jizz on my face. You fucking ask permission. Can I come on your face? Well, yes, you can. No, you don't even ask if you can. Where would you like it if it was a true gentleman? That's true. Where because like I don't me? need to fucking get hit in the eye and get, like, fucking pink eye. Yeah, I did that before, too. I, I've i had that happen. <laughs> Poor Carlos. He's, he's, like, visibly sweating right he's now. He's, like, la, 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 plugging his ears. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Things are okay. It's okay. He's oh, a, okay. He's a bit verklempt at the moment. <laughs> Talk amongst oh. yourself. The French and Indian war was neither French nor Indian. Ruben and I go way fucking back. Like, and we get deep, too. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and you four minutes this... ago, we were talking about chocolate. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we roll. Right. <laughs> Welcome to Pop Goulash, Carlos. Yeah. So we're going to totally I'm take a hard left-hand turn, right? happy to be here. <laughs> My businesses. <laughs> right. Let's talk about Carlos's companies right now too. That's a great follow up to that conversation. So, nineties television. So <laughs> word, hard left hand turn. <laughs> yes. Nineties. So I own television. a porn production company. You what? Yeah, it's called <laughs> Snowball Inc. <laughs> it all ties in, people. Oh shit balls. I love it. Okay, I've got this friend of mine that wrote a uh, trivia question for you guys. Okay. Ooh. On Facebook about nineties T V shows. Okay. Jason Kick, that's his real last name from Peoria, Illinois. Peoria, Illinois. P Town. I first house. came up here from Peoria, Illinois. <laughs> that's right. Ah. Four hundred and thirty seven miles <laughs> on one tank of gas. <laughs> that's Richard Pryor. Dude. He was from Peoria. Yes he was. He was. Yep. And so was the uh, guy that screamed when he was doing stand-up. Sam Kinison. Sam Kinison, yep. Yep. I went to... Uh, ow, ow! <laughs> God. The, the Wild Thing video? Your ears yeah, have dude. been popped. Yes. I went yes, to the same have. grade school Why do you think that, we call them poppers? That uh, Pryor went to. Really? No shit. And we saw the house where it blew up, the meth. Yeah. Pretty crazy shit. Well, it wasn't meth. It, he, he, no, he didn't do that. And he had to no, do he that. He caught himself on fire, dude. Yeah, I thought that was in Los Angeles. All right, I don't know. He he grew up in a whorehouse, though. Yeah, he did. In Peoria. Maybe that was the house. I didn't it's know right that. next to mine. Because people's crotches were on fire at that point, I'm sure. 
Okay, here we go. Jason Kick. <laughs> Peoria. Crabs and the red ants. I don't, I don't know. Can you guess what one of Carlos's favorite early '90s shows was? Here's a clue. This is easy. Jason. Jesus. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Damn it's, it, Jason. It's about a scientist named Sam and his friend Al that no one else can see. And Sam's end goal is to return oh, home. Oh, quantum leap. <laughs> yes. Duh. Quantum leap. <laughs> quantum leap was a good show, man. You know. Fucking great show. That's when it came out once a week. And if you didn't have a VCR and you missed it, you're, you're shit out you're of luck. Fuck. Did you know that Michael Landon used to piss in his bed? From family highway, highway to heaven, highway to heaven, and little house on the prairie, and little house on the prairie. The only reason I know that little tidbit of fucking knowledge now is because of the my favorite murder podcast, and they were talking about like serial killers and and blah blah blah. Not that he was a serial killer because he was not. Nor was he murdered by one. Not at all. But they were talking about like typically as as kids who be become those things later in life. They either pee in their bed or they get a really bad concussion or there's some other like traumatic thing that has happened. His dad used to shame him and fucking hang his like pee stain. That's just wrong. Right. Like awful. Sorry. Totally like sidebar for a second. But talking about Quantum Leap and like kind of like that era reminded me of Michael Landon for a minute. Fucked up knowledge so, nuggets that you get to hear. <laughs> like, just off the top of my head, some yes. of my favorite shows, Quantum Leap was one of them. Roseanne. Fuck yeah. Dude, uh, I don't know watch the... I don't know how I feel the re- about the, the, re- re- the reboot. reboot. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm curious because I want to see how they deal with Dan's death. Yeah. They said that they're going to like ignore it, though, in from which, what I've heard. In which fucking Becky are they going to use? The I, original, hopefully. like, like you said, I hope that they like do original be Becky, Chalky. and then the next episode do Sarah Chalky, <laughs> and then one episode they do, or they like switch them off mid episode. That I'm would be great. Curious, like I, I don't know because Can I we have do not... Sarah Chalky because she's so fucking hot. I love Scrubs. Sarah she's yeah, she was in Scrubs. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard either way like how they're they like, haven't meaning they haven't said anything about that. But, but you know, know anyway. what would be perfect yeah. what? if they went back to the original DJ from the pilot episode mm-hmm. and said "fuck you" to the kid that played <laughs> oh, DJ yeah. for like ten yep. seasons. Fuck you, son. Sorry, we're gonna Poor throw kid that with shit the pilot. <laughs> so speaking of perfect, uh, perfect strangers. Perfect strangers. Oh my god, yes. Another good one. Yeah. Family yeah. matters. This was back in the era when Carl. Chi- do you know this was back in the era when Chicago was the place that Chicago was yes. huge to you, play put a place of uh, the the setting for your TV show. The Family Matters house is off of Wrightwood, and it's right near where I used to live with Denise off of really? Ashland. Really, Todd went there. He fucking took pictures, I think, like last year. The house really? is still there. Yeah. Family fucking matters, son. Mm-hmm. Carl yeah. Winslow. Which is funny because that's <laughs> that's also one of the shows that switches switched moms halfway through the season, much like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And nobody complained. Yes, they did. And nobody said shit. Mm-mm. You're right. I forgot about and that. And probably my favorite show growing up was The Wonder Years. Oh, oh dude. Yes. But didn't that start technically in the 80s? 88. But it went through like 93, I think. Dude, yeah. here's something to blow your mind. Winnie the Pooh was yeah. female. What? Yeah. I read that somewhere online. And if it's online, it's true. Like but the Berenstain Bears? Like the Berenstain Bears. Yeah. Winnie, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh was a woman. Or he was a girl bear. Like the Mandela effect? Right. <laughs> I don't know if they ever really use pronouns. Really? When discussing Winnie the Pooh in in the books. I'd have to go back and look. Yeah. But somebody had... I, I'd read that online somewhere that like Winnie the Pooh was female. If you think about it, Winnie Cooper was a chick. I gotta say, man, we the '90s had the best TV music, like everything coming out. Dude, '90s, early 2000s. Was I'm with so you on good. This. Dude, honestly, like Dana I'm keeps like, well, what about this show? I'm like, I didn't watch fucking TV in the '90s. What about this <laughs> show? I didn't really watch TV, and then I realized that like I didn't watch anything but really, but like, okay, yeah, I watched TGIF. Yeah, okay, that was on that ABC. Was awesome. Right, ABC, yeah. and like MTV, dude. When MTV was good. When MTV was good. Right. One, when, when they still like showed music platform. videos. And then in the evenings is when they showed their TV shows. Did you see? So. I haven't watched the 90s okay. special yet on on. I saw uh, the first episode. You saw, because the other one will air tonight, the second yeah. episode. I tagged Judd, Judd Winnick. I know, and he replied to you. That he was did. dope. It was great. I tagged Jud, Judd that? Winnick from uh, whoa, The Real whoa, World. Whoa, 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 whoa. Breaking news. Breaking news. Like, literal breaking news. George Romero just passed away. What? Night of the Living Dead director died at 77 today. Wow. R.I.P. George Romero. Oh, that movie scared the hell out of awful. me as a kid. The father, the father of all zombie movies. 
feasibly. Like yeah, zombies, well, yeah, because zombies that's what were it was based off of. Well, yeah, that. I mean, zombies were a thing prior to that, but he was the one that uh, really brought it in the mainstream. He main brought that prevalence to light, totally. and used it as an allegory for racial relations back in the sixties. Yes, he did. I remember reading about all that shit though too. Yeah. That's exactly what. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so awesome. yeah, it just popped up on my on my watch. I so. feel like I redemption is. I know. I know. Happening Jake right has now. bitched about it. <laughs> He should please I tell him to spent, bitch more. Please. I spent all that money on it and she never wears it. Please tell him to bitch more because I always fucking forget it. It's, Dude, it's because I, I don't wear jewelry. I don't either. I wear this and I wear this. But I, I because I'm so not used. I have tattoos on my wrists. <laughs> like I don't. I'm not used Put to it on wearing. Your wrist that you don't even wear tattoos. On. I know, but like it's still, you can like, switch I'm, it. For, which I also, can, by the way, regardless, great tattoo. You just got it. Thank you. Yeah, you got, Dana got the Rocky Horror lips on her uh, upper right hand chest. I did. I did. Thank you guys so much. Like I. I fucking love this tattoo. Like it's it turned dope. out, it is. It looks it, really it good. Too. Fucking looks real though. Like a few of my friends commented, they're photorealistic, like, it looks real. And so I'm like, homeboy, Holy like shit. I'm sure homeboy that did it has done a bunch he of your did work. This one, he designed this one. He designed. Oh, so he designed. But his this work, chest piece. He, honestly, his work has improved. Like that's photorealistic. Oh, well, his yeah. work has completely like I can see like the arc de triomphe of well, his so, work. So this is like a, like American classic. And yeah, like yeah. I had him design this because I asked him, I'm talking about the chess piece on the upper left. It's a rose and a, and a evil Knievel helmet, it's, which represents her mother and her it's father. for my dad, right? Because when my dad got sick this year, but he also designed the jukebox that I have on my left arm. With the treble clef. Well, the treble clef I already had, and we were going to cover he that up originally. It. Yeah. And so he said last minute, like it was totally like a fucking like, Fubar, he's like, let's design around that. And I said, okay, I'm game. And he fixed the treble clef, thank God. Hopefully homeboy can fix my fucked up Batman. I think he'll be able to. <laughs> and he, he designed this one for me, the cassette tape with the roses. Like, again, like, he's fantastic. He's such a good artist. My buddy John at uh, Full Moon Tattoo in Crystal Lake, I will totally fucking give him a shout out. Like, he's done several tattoos for me over the years, and he's fantastic. So thank you guys for that. So back to nineties television. Yes. So, dude, the real world, yo. Like you said, well, Judd, Judd Winnick. Winnick. Oh. Yeah, Which you want to hear something crazy? Was Judd the Irish dude? No. No. You, no you're thinking Judge was of Glenn. A, Judd. You're thinking of Glenn. He was the Irish dude. Judd was no, on first season two season or three. one. I'm talking about. No, we're talking there about the guy with the Irish guy. Up there. That's Glenn. It was not season one. Okay. I promise you, season one was Eric Nice. Um, yes. Eric Nice. And Heather B. Heather B. With her was, awful single all glocks down. Yeah, and it was Julie who was like Julie, a dancer. And then Kevin. Wasn't who, Julie the country girl? At the very first episode, the um, Heather's B. Kevin went was off the black like, dude. Kevin yes, was the black dude. Pedro, he, who died, right? No, no, no. no that was Judd season. That's Judd season. That's San Francisco. Okay. That was Pedro. That was my favorite and, season. Uh, that was, wi- was uh, good Puck. Season. Was that season? Puck, Puck was, was San Francisco, amazing. too. It was Puck, Rachel, um, Beth. I think was on that season. Yeah, it was Beth, John. Was John Judd. the country Christian singer dude? Nope. That well, yes, there was another John. Right, right. Yes, sorry, okay. John. Long and time then ago. Judd and Pam. And Judd and Pam actually got married. They in did. IRL. They're still married. They are. It's they're um, so cute. But it was cute though because I I, tw- I I like posted to him. I'm like I, it was so good to see like to have them throw it back because he always talks about Pedro. I shouldn't say they always. They were so tight, but though. they were such good friends, and and he. On his Facebook and Twitter, like, he'll always, like, throw that back. Maybe, I say always, I don't mean it, like, always every day, but he'll throw it back. And so I I Facebooked to him, and I'm like, hey, it was really good to see you guys, and, and to see you guys mentioned on this 90s special on CNN. And he goes, oh, we didn't get to see it yet. We DVR'd it. And it was wow. really cool. And he, like, re- he's replied to me a few times, too. But it was really nice, too, because, like, he knew... That they were talking about that. And like, and he knew because there were other fans who liked my post. They were San Francisco, correct? Yeah, it was San Francisco. It was Rachel, Puck, Judd, Puck. Pam. Uh, Glenn came on later, I think. And it was um, uh, not Beth. Not Beth. But it was John and some other short-haired blonde chick. All right, it was Pedro, Puck, Rachel, Corey, Pam, Corey, Mohammed, Judd, Mohammed. and Joe. Yep. And Joe was the Australian broad. And Mohammed, I remember him because he had the beautiful fucking dreadlocks. Yes. I remember him. Yeah, that's who it was. And then when Puck left, they June replaced 30th him. June 30th to November 10th of 94. And who did they, re- was it Glenn who they replaced him with? It had to have been Glenn. I think so. No, 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 because Glenn's name would have popped up on here. 
Maybe not. Uh, maybe it was uh, Corey? No, Corey. She's the blonde, short blonde That's hair a chick. chick. Okay. Um, whoever it was, though. They, they, all I have to say is. Yeah, because he was the first time they. Puck was the first time they ever kicked they anybody off. They fucking booted off. somebody off. Because he was a dick. Well, he was an ant, and he was... He was a bike messenger, wasn't yes, he? Yes, and he was dangerous. And it, yes. He kept was, getting into accidents and losing teeth and shit. He kept getting hit shit. by cars and shit. But see, so talking about, like, 90s shows, like, this is what I equate that shit to. Like, MTV for sure. Like, because how old are you, Carlos? You're, like, our age. I'm 39. He's, year, yeah, okay. he's between you and I. He's Okay, so I'm 38, so we're, like, all the same fucking age. So... That's what I equate the 90s to was totally like the MTV generation. And you like you think about that. Like we grew up on that when MTV was legit. Yeah. And when it had a message and something like I remember back um, when the Clinton campaign went on. Lady Miss the Cure. Rock the vote. Yes. And fucking um, vote baby vote by fucking Lady Miss Cure from uh, Delight. Mm-hmm. I remember that shit. Like but throwing back to all this stuff. It's so cool. Because people still appreciate this stuff. And this is what we, like, I think the 2000s were kind of a meh, kind of a foobar time. Yeah. I mean, 9-11 happened. I get that. Like, Ruben and I, that's, we graduated a couple months after 9-11 happened. So, I get that. Like, that changed a whole lot of things. But I think that there were a whole lot of other culture-changing things that happened so much before that. Well, the thing was, it was like, in the 90s, everything was very, well... Everything was very 80s. Like, it's a stupid thing to say, but, like, it's, after Nirvana happened, like, the whole cultural landscape shifted. It blew up. And, yeah. like, like, it was one of those things where I just lost my hat. <laughs> um, but it was one of those things where, like, music changed, fashion changed. Completely. Everything. Everything, everything changed. It was a left turn. Everything. Like, like it, it was one of those things where, like you said, we are the MTV generation. We, we really grew, are. literally grew up on MTV. We were probably the last generation that remembered, like, music videos, music videos being, like, the prominent thing. I remember being in 90, it was 1999, I want to say it was. I, it was 99 because I had just started at Northern. Do you and remember I, when they broadcast on campus in 2000? No. They did? Mm-hmm. Where the fuck was I? I, I was probably at work. Mm-hmm. But I remember, like, being there and typing up an email to MTV. Because that was right about the time where they stopped showing videos and started just doing reality all original TV. reality programming, original programming, and whatever that wasn't music. Right. And I re- it was right on their 20th anniversary, or close to their 25th anniversary, or the 20th anniversary, or something. It would have been, 20th anniversary would have been 2003, but it was close enough, like, yeah. where shit was still going on. I've got some TV shows that were on MTV from the 90s. I'll okay. read out to you. Hold that. Oh, yes. Ahead. So yes, I yes, remember yes, typing yes. out an email to them being like, is this what you want your legacy to be? You were you were a music video station, right? M you were fucking a, TV, yeah. yeah. You were a music station. This is how we all exactly got our music from Cindy Lauper and you know Mexican radio. From and when they finally allowed the black culture to come through on with fucking Michael Jackson. TV, right? Like that, like that's and what from we there, and then on. all the way until like Beavis and Butthead, because that was the death of it. Ninety seven like, is when they stopped Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. So like, but that's that was our but that's era. What we grew up that's on, what we yeah. grew up on, man. MTV was our channel. My so called life. That Dude. was my fucking jam. It was one season. My so called life went on Fox. No, it was only on MTV. It was only on MTV. I swear to God, because it was it was one season. I Time own to it. Tech. I oh, promise you, tech. because that show. I was so pissed when they didn't bring it back because I felt so unresolved. I think it was like. 94 or 95 when it came on MTV. And I was like, holy shit. They repeated shit. it on MTV. They repeated it, but it was never on Fox. It was only on MTV. I don't want the fucking link on fucking iTunes, god damn but it. that show, because I was a sophomore in high school in 94, and that was so... It spoke so closely to me in my life at that time, because like Same I here. was I was that girl. Like You were no, not that girl. No, it was girl. on ABC. <laughs> 
Oh, was it? Yes. Oh, fuck, it was My So-Called Life is an American teen drama televised series created by blah, 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 blah. It originally aired on ABC from August 25th of 94 to January 26th of 95. And they repeated on MTV. And was distributed by Bedford Falls Company with ABC. Yeah, but do you remember? They repeated on MTV. That's what it was. Do you remember what their- Thank you, Wikipedia. One of their first- I'm glad you looked that up, though, too, because like I I knew it wasn't Fox, but I thought it was MTV. I thought it was Fox, because they were always cutting edge with their stuff. They were, with the programming. Um, But do you remember what their- first scripted live action shows one of their first scripted which network mtv one of their first scripted live Wasn't action it, shows uh, kids in the hall no that was a canadian show canada <laughs> canadia eh? it was a canadia no their one of their first scripted live action shows was dead at 21 which nobody remembers. I was going to say, like, I I have no frame of reference. Yeah, it was only, a, I think it only lasted one season. Do you remember Aeon Flux? Oh, when yeah. it was MTV Liquid or whatever? I'm, t- no, I'm going to go through the, the list here. Liquid MTV. Yes. Beavis and Butthead, obviously. Yes. Of course, Daria. Daria. TRL. Yes. Real uh, World. Was... Aeon Flu. Aeon yes. Flux, yeah. Then they made that really awesome movie with Charlize Theron. MTV Unplugged? Mm. Oh, oh, of course. Dude. Of course. Some of the greatest music ever has come out of MTV. Oh, I know. Tom Green Show. Oh, my God. Yo, MTV Raps. Yes. Stab Five Freddy. Come on. Oh, so many good MTV Beach House. Oh, that's right. There was a Spring Break Beach House. Yeah. It's a moment. It's a Spring Break moment. (laughs) Yes. And here it is. Just Say Julie. That was like 80s, I think, until the the early 90s. Oh, yeah. Dead at 21. That was 1994 when it came out. I never... Oh, my God. I remember his Vaguely. But he was like like one of... He's been in other things, I'm sure. chick... What the fuck is she from? And she had that beautiful haircut that I wanted in the 90s and I could never have. Oh, the... uh, the, Yeah, it was that same as... uh, uh, What's her name had in... Uh, all of those stupid uh, and friends. Party Courtney, of Five, Courtney, Courtney Cox, Cox yeah. Road Rules. Did you watch those shows though, Carlos? Did you watch Road Rules? I watched I did. the original Road Rules. You did, yeah. really? But when it came to like the Road Rules Real World Challenge, I didn't give a fuck. I didn't give a shit about that. But like, so so you watched Carlos? You watched the Real World? You watched Road Rules? Like, what cut you off from that shit though? When it started getting. When, well, I guess what cut me off from MTV in general is when it, when they stopped playing music. Yeah. When it became more and right. more of that stuff, and then I started consuming music at, you know, going to Sam Goody or right buying word, cassette tapes, right. <laughs> no. Right. Stuff like that. So it, I don't know if it, I don't, and I don't know if it was a situation where I just sort of grew out of MTV. I think, you know? I think we, we all, all kind of did. did. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot, but I think a lot of that was one MTV it stopped changed, showing. Yeah, they, right. The climate of the station just completely changed. They stopped showing music. Yeah. All the shows, dude. Do you remember Syphil and Ollie? It was the sock puppet Vaguely. show. Vaguely, dude. We used to get blazed and watch Syphil and Ollie, <laughs> dude. That show was my that Eli and I. That was like, dude. That it was directed by Liam Lynch, who went on to direct a bunch of other stuff as well. But he directed videos for the Foo Fighters and Weezer and Beck and all kinds of oh, stuff. Oh yeah, he did. Now see, but but that's around the time though. I think MTV really took a curve. If we're going to talk about like '90s programming too, like MTV really took a, a curve in my opinion, around 98, 99. Because, again, like, that's when the reality shows were infused. And, like, watching, when you get a chance to watch the CNN show about the 90s, like, they talk about that, though, too. Like, the the advent of reality fucking TV really started on MTV. That's where it started. That's where all that shit started. And I think that we could even, Ruben, do a podcast dedicated to reality TV and talking about that shit. Like, the advent That'd be a of good that. idea. I think... Um, oh, for sure. I think... Um, yeah, because, dude, okay, so <laughs> I hate The Bachelor and all things related ugh. to it. Never but, seen batch, it. but The Bachelor in Paradise is coming on, and I'd love to do like a uh, simultaneous podcast series based on The Bachelor in Paradise where we wa- watch it and then rip the fuck out of it. I would it only sucks. watch it with you because I've never watched oh, it. Oh, it's terrible. Period. It's terrible. It's like the dating game with STDs. Oh. Um, okay, so let's talk about that. So, so you brought up a ton of MTV shows. Which is fantastic. So, so Ruben, Liquid if, Television, is that okay? of course, Beavis and Butthead, 
Dude, Ren and Stimpy used to get oh, shown Ren and from Stimpy, time yeah. to time. Nickelodeon. Late, well, Nickelodeon, but they started showing it on MTV as well they later in the 90s. They finally did, yep. But yeah, like that, the ro- real world, real world. Mm-hmm. And you know what turned me off to the real world? When they did two seasons in San Francisco or two seasons in New York and didn't come to Chicago until like the eighth season. It came, you know when it came to Chicago? When I stopped giving a fuck about it. In, <laughs> um, when 2011, or, or I'm sorry, 2001, 2011. sorry, not 2011, 2001, because they were in fucking Wicker Park. They were right on North Avenue. Yeah. And I remember my sister was living in the city at the time. And there was like um, some gym, like Cougar Gym or Tiger Gym right down the fucking street. People were so pissed off that they were there in Wicker Park. They threw red paint on the front door of that building. They were so pissed off that they were there um, because Wicker Park still was not like it was still sort of forming its its culture base, if you will. Um, it wasn't what we all know it to be right now. And I hate what it is right now. My sweet spot for Wicker Park was like 2003 to 2010. That was my sweet spot because like, like that's when I was hanging out there a ton. But yeah. yeah. So. But uh, so it was that real world was one of them. And actually, I auditioned for the real world. Really? Yeah. I, I want to say it was like in 97. I can't remember Get what season. Out. But Eli and I both drove to the city. Well, I drove to the city. Eli hitched a ride. Shut but up. But they were doing it at the they were. Oh, shit. What did I do? No, okay. no. I didn't do anything. <laughs> but they did a uh, they did an open casting call. At Hard Rock Cafe back in like 97. Really? Yeah. So we went to the open casting call. We filled out the forms. We brought in photos. Oh my God. We did roundtable discussions and nothing ever came from there. That was it. But yeah, we we, we actually auditioned to try to become a <sighs> next awesome. cast member on the, That's on the real world. That's fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the few few times that I got we actually answered an open casting call like God. that. God. It wouldn't. It was the only time, not one of the few times. It was the it only was time that the, I've ever the time. The time. <laughs> yeah, so it was, you know, it was one of those things. It was it was kind of cool. I mean, there was a bajillion motherfucking people there. I'm sure. Yeah. Wow. Yep. That was my uh 4 minutes of nothingness. So 90 shows for me um 90210 for sure. Duh. I mean, like I, that that came out in what, like ninety or ninety one. I watched that Melrose Place. Um, I di- <laughs> you know it's funny. I didn't ER watch- dude thirty ER. something. I didn't watch dude. ER. I watched ER. That was one of the few that I did watch. But I worked. I like, didn't. That's, and I know I'm cutting into you, but like for me, it was that was the thing. Like I you I was always in- cut into me. Yeah, I know. I cut it. into everybody. Fuck them. Yeah. Um, uh, but no, I I worked a lot. Like I, I did not come. For, I came from a working class family that couldn't afford to like give I, me money for concerts that I wanted to I go get to. It, man, so that for was me, my life. It was one of those things that like came come ninety four. Like I was fifteen and ninety four. I believe it was or ninety two. You were sixteen. I was no because I, I was fifteen and ninety four. Because you're a year. Yeah. Ahead of me. So I was. You know. I I was no because I was fifteen and ninety two. It's two thousand seven. You're thirty nine. I'm thirty eight. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> Ruben can't math. I can't math. <laughs> That's the dehumidifier. I got flooded on Wednesday. Okay. Um, but so when I started, when I was able to work, I had to work. So most of my nights were spent working. I feel you. You know, and there were times where I was working two jobs at a time in high school. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, but yeah, so I... I didn't really get a whole lot of time to watch a lot of the programming. Like, when you said, oh, what about uh, uh, um, Saved by the Bell? I'm like, dude, I was working on Saturday mornings when Saved by the Bell was on TV. Well, but but so Saved by the Saved by the Bell started in the 80s. So like so like. But nonetheless, I didn't watch it. But I, it, it was high school kids. I didn't give a fuck about high school I, kids in the 80s. <laughs> I watched it. No, they were junior high kids at the time when it started. But uh, pfft, still I watched not in junior high in the 80s. I didn't give a fuck. I watched it. Whatever. But like, so my 90s shows, like I said, 902 and 0. The new Mickey Mouse Club, I don't give a shit. Judge me. I don't fucking care because I still... Still sucks the dick of the mouse. Dude, I'm still friends with... A, you know what's fucking cool about the advent of social media? I am now friends with a lot of those people. And when I say friends, I don't mean just like, oh, let's let's comment on each other's shit. I mean, like, I've hung out. I've worked merch for your shows. And I've done this for you. Like, And I'm continuing to, like, support your careers. And we're still friendly. Like, that's awesome. So the new Mickey Mouse Club for sure. Now, granted, that kind of 
reinvented itself in the very late 80s. I believe it was 89. I believe so. Because um, I remember watching it when it came out, but oh, I yeah. never followed it as heavy as you did. Fucking fantastic. And, like, and I didn't even have the Disney Channel, but that's how hardcore of a fan I was. I would go to my friends' houses after school to watch that. That's how Christian Cates got to watch TV. Well, but, like, so it was that and Kids <laughs> Incorporated. So, um, oh, Incorporated. Martin fucking Nika KIDS. Yeah, man. And Eric Belfour. Yes, yes. I don't care what anybody says. Fergie's fucking hot. Fergie is hot. Even if she did piss herself on stage, and I don't Josh Duhamel's hot too. Thank I don't God know who they're that is. beautiful. That's her husband. I don't know. Fergie, delicious, beautiful, hot couple. Dude, that song "Big Girls Don't Cry" is still one of my favorite songs ever. It's a good song. Her stuff with the uh, Black Eyed Peas is fucking wretched, though. <laughs> oh, it's te- it's fucking, fucking terrible. Wretched. I saw the Black Eyed Peas open up for No Doubt. In I remember when the Black Eyed Peas was just three Without dudes. Fergie. Yeah, it was the fucking three. Chris they, and I were at the fucking show, standing in line by the Aragon and waiting to get into the Aragon. And these three dudes come up on like little fucking um, like the the cafe fucking things. And it was the Black Eyed Peas. Oh, really? They were one of the openers. And we're looking and we're like, who are these Rastafarian guys? We're going to stand in there like, what the fuck is this? By the way, Black Eyed Peas, another brainchild of Jimmy Iovine. Were yes, they really? yes, they were. Yes, one hundred percent. Their first album was dope. I Will have their I first am album. Was Will on I that am. special. Yep. Yes. Yeah, their first album was dope. I have their first album when they were still a hip hop act before Fergie joined the fantastic. group and ruined it. It was great. It's fantastic. But he said that she needed to be there. Um, Who did Jimmy Iovine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that was his one mistake in his very <laughs> illustrious career. Ninety shows. Though, Granted, like, he made a ton of money off of them, but they their music sucked. I'm quick flipping down. Felicity, duh. Seinfeld, duh. Yeah. Friends, of course. Funnily enough, Seinfeld didn't get into until well after college. And oh. uh, the f- Friends never got into it until I married my wife. I just, okay, so I will give you that. I just got into Friends probably in like the last year. Some of that shit's pretty funny. Some of them are like, meh. I but... know. Some of them are kind of like, meh. But Rugrats on Nickelodeon. Oh, yeah. I watched that Ren and Stimpy, duh. Yeah. Um, dude, hey, dude. Oh my God! Hey, dude! Salute yeah. your shorts! Oh yeah, salute your the shorts! Ranch. Hey, dude! Well, yeah. David Lasher, okay. Camp on Awana, Camp yes. on Awana. We hold you in our hearts, Blossom. and when I think about you, it makes, it makes me, me want to fart. fart. Blossom. <laughs> I never watched Blossom. Whoa! Oh my God! I have Joey. all of the seasons on my DVR at home. So David Lasher, who was on Hey Dude, was Blossom's boyfriend. I'm Blossom. Whoa. Whoa. And Christine Taylor, now soon to be Ben Stiller's ex-wife. They're getting divorced? They're getting divorced, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Um, she was on She Blossom was on too? Hey Dude. She was on Hey Dude? Yes. That's, you know what? I was just looking that up the other day. That's right. She was. She was on Hey Dude. Because then she did the Brady movie shortly after that when they did the reincarnation Who, of the Brady Was Bunch she movies. Marsha? Yeah. She had to have been Marsha because she was the only hot one. She was Marsha. But she looked just like her. Yeah. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Um, Pete and Pete, The Adventures of Pete and Pete. I never really watched Pete and oh. Pete. Oh. I didn't watch Pete and Pete. So good. Cat um, dog. Yes. I mean, I just, it, it's all of these But fun... it's fun. How, how, how interesting is it, though, that most of our childhood memories from the 90s revolved around MTV and Nickelodeon? I mean, let's that's, be honest. That's all it was. That's but, all there was. It, right. But it's like, funny because, it like, us. my cousin, who's about, she just turned, she's just in her early 30s, mm-hmm. Disney Channel. I mean, her. I was still and that's Disney. Because beca- yeah. remember, if you think about it, the Disney Channel wasn't even, like, right now you can go on and just get your base level package and you'll get at least one of the Disney Channels. Right. That was, like premium you pay paid cable for that shit and that that's was, that was yeah. almost like getting like hbo when we were kids i was only able like in florida it was free you could get it in florida oh, i remember sure. my uncles having it because like winnie the pooh's playhouse or whatever it was i remember watching that when i was down there if you visiting. lived down there yeah you got that shit for free but like i, I remember so this is how committed i was to the to the new mickey mouse club i was so committed that even if i didn't have the free like preview re- weekend i would turn it on when the tv would still scramble before you just get the black screen like you do see now. where most of us were watching free porn you were trying to watch the mickey mouse i was porn. trying to fucking yeah. and you was that still, a titty i think yeah, it was a, right. was that was a that, nipple was that mickey mouse's ear? um but like i <laughs> we're like is that a titty she's like is that an ear <laughs> you thought, like you couldn't see the fucking screen but you could hear the audio and i would i'm not kidding you i set up my boom box and i hit record on a cassette tape so I could at least hear the music and listen. That's how I would listen to episodes when remember, I didn't have it. Do you remember in the early or in the late eighties when they would do like the Disney 
animation and they would cut the animation to old music. Yes. Yeah. I have those on. I used to have those on cassette. Do like you? I would record it. Yeah. That's how I got into like Ugh. Motown. See, I wish that I still had my cassette tapes, especially of like the Mickey Mouse. I do because for me, like the Mickey Mouse Club stuff too. I have VHS tapes of some of the episodes, right. but to have that still and be able to like pop it in, and if I could put it on CD and like be able to easily listen to that make it consumable for myself i would still like i said i still talk to these people i should say still i talk to these people now i'm gonna go party in houston with one of them and like when i go down there and we're gonna hang out and have fun i don't have any famous friends i'm not it's not even trying to be like well no i I do famous friends i have a famous friend taylor taylor feeling feeling yeah yeah i'm feeling it i'm feeling it (laughs) feeling it One of these days we'll get him on the podcast, whether we have to Skype him in or what, but we're going to have sure. him on the podcast one of these days. Nice we'll get, guy. Very nice he's guy. He's a really good kid. We'll get Damon on, too, because he's, like, stoked to be on. So is Tiffany. So, yeah, but, like, we all grew up on television in the 90s, and there was so much good stuff that was out there, but it's just a matter of, like... We can't even accurately talk no. about all of that right now. Like, I we know. would have to dedicate An entire hours. episode where we, like... S- like didn't even do an update of what we were consuming in the week and just talk right. about and television. Just talk about everything with that stuff. So because... quickly because uh, my wife has to go to yoga at some point here, real quick. Like very soon. Yeah. So, but we, I put out the AMA, and of course, only one what the person fuck is responded. AMA? Ask me anything. Oh yeah, who? Uh, responded? I know. I'm just asking you to say that out loud so people know. Dude, it's 20 fucking 17. If you don't know what AMA is, fucking Google that shit. Some people don't. TLDR. Right, yeah, right. That's what I said earlier. If you don't know what right. that means, fucking Google that shit. <laughs> you know how many times I have to Google shit because I don't know what shorthand is? I'm so fucking retarded when it comes to that stuff. I'm like, what do you mean? T- what, what, is that? what do those initials mean? Can't you just write out a goddamn word? <laughs> For the love of Christ. So, um, Kevin Apgar, I'm giving you a shout out, homie. Um, What's up, Kevin? He hey, was hey. My, one of my TAs in college. And said, uh, yes, to me, Earl and the Dying Girl. If you guys haven't watched me, oh, Earl really? and the Dying Girl. I heard you talking about that last podcast. Yes, yeah. dude, you got to watch it. It's a good movie. He also wanted to ask why we dumped Spotify for Apple Music. Carlos, you're exempt from this question. <laughs> okay. Dana? Honestly, for me, it was just an ease of use. Like, because because I became an Apple kid again, finally, First of all, the Spotify app drained the fuck out of my phone and it and it hit, like the app itself trying to get it to load and to do everything. It was a pain in my ass. And also because the Apple Music app, it charged me only half of what Spotify did, but it for me it did the same thing. So I'm not only you now Carlos, I'm kind of throwing this to you. So you would ask what the differences are. Yeah, Ruben. I, d- I don't think personally in my experience using both of those apps, I don't think that there's a, a big difference as far as the interface, in my opinion, for Apple is way fucking easier to use way easier. than Spotify. Cause, way easier. Because seriously, like you listen to one thing on Spotify and it puts it in a lineup for you, yep. which is fine. Yeah. Which okay. is cool. I'm good with that. But... but when you're trying to find something that you've previously downloaded on Spotify, like you can't find it. And then try to you delete shit. You have to go shit. through like five pages to get back to that page to delete that song or album or whatever. It's a pain in the ass. And then you try to delete it and you can't even fucking delete it. Right. Like it's tough to delete shit. Right. It's tough to find shit. And there's no way, like you can go offline. Mm-hmm. And play the shit back, but still, even then, it's but tough to But I can do that out. on Apple Music. I just right. go to my downloaded shit. I don't even have to go offline. I just go to my downloaded stuff, and I can play that shit. And you can even... And here's what I liked, too, and I think you can still do this on Spotify, but what I really preferred for Apple was I could see all of the songs in the playlist, and I could download the whole playlist. But I could choose the songs that I didn't want to download. Right. And I can't recall because it's been so long since I've used Spotify. I don't recall that you could pick and choose songs no, you that you want to like, well, download could. the whole you could, thing. You would have to go into songs. Individually. See, one that's a, a pain in the balls. Now, you go into Apple Music, though, and you go into that playlist, and it shows you all the songs, and you hit download or whatever. I can just hit stop on any of yeah. the songs that I don't want to download. And I don't have to fucking go into something else later on and do that. It's just, for me, it's just the ease and it, and it's the ease of 
integration with my own library that I have uploaded on there too. Right. It's just a bet for me. It's just a better and it's, tool. And it's easier to remove the songs. Yes. It's re- easier to remove the albums. Yes. It's easier. And I get one bill. I, and that's the other I get thing my too. iTunes bill. I don't right. have to pay two different companies to get what I to get what I want. Right. You know, it's already streamlined. It's already there. Bam. Right. Like, and and for me, it's like the the interface is easier to use. I don't have to fight with it. I don't have to launch mm-hmm. a secondary app to listen to other music. That's why I really don't use Amazon Music. Is because yeah. I, like, look, I want everything. Look, I am I am a. Give me simplicity or give me fucking death. Sure. You know, that's why I use an Apple product because my iPhone is easy to use. I remember when my wife and I first started dating, she handed me her Andro- her Droid X. And she's like, can you call this person? I'm like, I don't even know what, what am I doing with this? I couldn't figure it out. You have to blow on the screen to get it to come right. up first. Yeah, like I, like I, smoke signals, I don't know, you got to type in fucking Morse code. I don't know what the fuck was going on with it. It was just fucking difficult for me to use. So I'm like, I don't give a fuck about this application. <laughs> so it was one of those where I'm like, no, I'm done. I'm done with this. So yeah. it, that and like I even added Kirsten to my Spotify account. So it was 14 bucks a month or 14.99 a month. And she oh, never yeah. even used it. So I was, like, See, I was like, whatever, I'm done with it this. It doesn't make sense. No. Then. So I'm just like. Look, Apple, like, because in, 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 in Apple, you mu- bucked a little bit. Well, too. in Apple Music's infancy, it was really not easy to use. Like, it oh, wasn't as user friendly so as it is now. Like, when it first started, it was really kind of a shitty app to use, or it, was, it wasn't very easy to use. And now it's like streamlined. It's great. See, and I'm not familiar enough to know how it was because I, I mean, I, the last time I had an Apple product for, as far as a phone was 2011 until I bought my phone last For fall. Seven. Yeah. So, um, I think for me, just that particular app, it's already integrated with your phone. You don't have to fuck with anything, even your iPad, whatever your, your even your laptop, whatever it's integrated. I don't have to fuck with it. It already takes into consideration the music that I have in my library. It's just an easier, it just easy it's easier. Use. It's yeah. just easier. And we are, and it's better. Period. We, we are creatures of convenience yes. and it's convenient. It's just more convenient and fucking. I don't mind giving Apple any more of my money. I've already given them a lot. Of I know money they, to begin they've with, raped so. me alive for my Thank money. Thank you, Kevin, fine. for yeah. that question. Thanks for yes. Kevin for the question. Um, so as far as things go today, we're gonna wrap it up. I'd love to keep talking to you, bitches, but uh, Carlos, you, know, you need to come back. Yeah, though. Seriously, seriously, come back again. And I would love to get your podcast started again. Yes. Even if you have to find one person to do it with every week, just find somebody. Dude, okay. I mean, I'll drive down. It's fine. You don't have to, <laughs> dude. You don't have to do a Mike Misery. You don't have to do a Bill Burr and rant every episode. But find yourself a co-host. You got to know at Just least hang one. out and talk. And yeah, you got to know at least one person that'd be willing to sit down with you per weekly and just have a shit. Like that's how that's how Dana. Honestly, <laughs> that's how this started because Dana and I really didn't get like we lived across a, like a mile from each other for not even, but yeah, for, for like, like two years, years or so, two years, and we yeah. never even hung out. And this was a perfect kind of like how. Uh, Kevin Smith and Scott Mosier did Smodcast. Yes. Like they were friends for years, but never really had an opportunity to speak. This gives them an opportunity to speak with each other. You right. have to at least have one person in your life that you're like, that homie is my friend, and we never get to talk. Right? What a perfect opportunity to force ourselves to like make time for each other and sit down and talk and just be buds and talk shit, you know, for an yeah. hour. Even at the most. Or three, but who's or counting? Three. The more you know. Right. Dude, seriously, Barley and Blasphemy, man. I know the old episodes are not are no longer on iTunes. They can be. I just need to Update go back onto account. Podbean and... Oh, you were using Podbean? Yeah. Oh, you could easily get those back yep. up there. Put yeah. them back up. So. But I was Do episode it. number two. He was. He was really good. Really it, was good. A, it was a good episode. It was a lot of fun. He fed me Molson, but it was all right. Do it. I did. Seriously, get him back up there. Cause yeah, get I, him back okay, up there. Okay, guys. And I'll Wait. get Apple Music, too, okay? And I don't care about Apple Music. It again? Barlaby. Bar- <laughs> Barlaby and blah, blah, blah. Barley and Blasphemy. Okay. Get that shit back up. We drink so, beer and we shoot the shit. That's what we do. Because we need That's to what... link it. I want to link it to okay. the let like, me know. show yeah, description. Seriously, let me know. Shoot me a link and we'll put it in the show description. Yeah. But yeah, it was fair it's, enough. It's one of those like, dude, you, you, it's I can at least get those episodes back up. So yeah, people I mean, you sure. could talk to Mike Zilke. I'm sure he'd come back around. You could probably talk to Nathaniel. He'd come back on for sure. I'm just like, a Nathaniel was a great Patrick from Africa. Kind of be hard to have him back, but he's in Africa. Skype, so. homie. People in Poland, please listen to our podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. And all right. <laughs> so uh, but yeah, dude, definitely get those back up. Start your podcast again, man. Like, honestly, it was a fun podcast. It was a good podcast to do. Thank you. I feel encouraged and do it. I feel like there's some redemption at the end of this. 
doing? Episode here. Seriously, I think, well, like, I mean, top it off, we're all yeah. we're we've been talking about trying to start some kind of podcast network, like an A Town ish yeah. podcast that would be network. Because producer Jake does uh, Rags to Races, he has his own yeah. podcast as well. And I mean, you could call it Chicago Pod. So Chicago Land Podcast. We well, could. Yeah. We'd have to look up like we Make could sure figure that out that like the, used, the logistics we'll offline, but for sure like the boibs. Right, right. So, but yeah, so, but definitely, dude, you need to get back on that, man. It was a lot of fun. So. I concur. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm glad oh, that dude, you came out awesome. with me, man. I was out, totally man. looking forward to this. <laughs> dude, we're talking two hour and 20 minute podcast at this point. It's going to go by quick. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah, but seriously. All right, guys. So um, just remember to share us on social media. Uh, yeah, and share because you can win shit because Carlos sometimes. is being very nice. Yeah, like this a couple's again. massage. Right, uh, yeah, a naked couple's massage. Now, Dana and I are cheap as fuck, so you ain't getting shit from us for some. But some You'll accolades. get a shout out. Yeah, You'll exactly. Get a shout out. But yeah, seriously, please. Like, I know you guys are friends with ours on Facebook and you like the pod, but please do us a favor. Like our pod, like our fan page. Publicly like, share that shit. Publicly Thank share you. it. Like, we're trying to reach more people. We had like. Dude, yesterday we had 160 something yeah, downloads. Yeah, like yesterday. 161 or it something was like that. It was crazy. Wow. It was good. Yeah, it and was it was really just good. we didn't even have a new episode out. It was just like but a it was random like Friday. Like it was crazy. Listening, like to back episodes, which is yeah. great. So seriously, share the podcast with your friends, your family, people that you don't. Your grandma be, might not like it. People that you know don't mind the word though. fuck. That would be right. great. Um, but share the podcast <laughs> with everybody that you know. You know, share it on share it on Facebook. Share, we're on Twitter at Pop Goulash. Literally at Pop Goulash. Literally. Uh, we are on Facebook, facebook.com slash Pop Goulash. So share us with your friends. If you want, follow me on Instagram. I'll follow you back at underscore, or uh, what is my fucking Insta? Uh, pop on. underscore Goulash, G-O-U-L-A-S-H, underscore Ruben, R-E-U-B-E-N. I'm going to confirm. So that's, what? I'm going to confirm. No, it's it's Pop underscore goulash underscore Ruben. So you can follow me. I always post memes about the shows, yes, reminding people about the shows. <laughs> but uh, but please follow us and share us because we're trying to grow this thing. And we want, look, we're all egotistical, egomaniacal bastards. This is going to help make or break my decision to continue nursing or marketing fuckers. So share this shit. And nobody gets I'm paid, an, by the way. No, I we're not we're, we're not, not making any paid. money off we of this. We're doing this shit for you. So the least you can do is share. Seriously, this, this shit's costing me some money and i got diapers to buy it's right like I, well and i have to start paying you back for that stuff too yeah it's all right sexual favors are fine we just I won't mean, tell our spouses under the table it's fine um <laughs> That's, how else do you do it and, uh, back alleys and shit yeah glass I mean, table by the way so that's good for me you know <laughs> right right because you can see, see exactly you can watch see through shit and Shiza uh, Essen. <laughs> anyway, but so yes. yeah, so feel free, like interact with us there. You can also give us a call at two two four three two four five two three four. He fucking memorized it. Wow. Legit, like he was talking about it earlier. He legit memorized that. Well, let me let me verify. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure that's no. like. On no, yeah, page. it was completely wrong. It's actually two two four three two five four two three five. I was way off. I mean, on you that. were close. <laughs> so yeah, but you can Ish. call us and leave us a voicemail at two two four three two five four two three five. That's three two 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 four. I'm just about He'll news. edit the last part. I ain't out. editing <laughs> shit. It's two two four three two five four two three five. Leave us a voicemail. Give us some suggestions, comments, yeah. concerns. Tell us we're wrong on things. Because Lord knows we just spout shit out. We don't. We're not even right on. Everything. I had a corrections corner. I'm stealing that from my favorite murder but i said that the no doubt album return of saturn was released in 99 it was released in 2000 i said that on the last episode so that's my own correction you fuckers didn't catch it i'm glad it. you said that dana you ignorant slut it would have been riding in the streets and you can also <laughs> feel free to email us at pop goulash 42 at gmail.com fucking write it down right fucking write us man we love to hear from you but please definitely share us on facebook if you share us on facebook we'll give you a shout out and also, a free couple's naked massage right duh. and also if you go to itunes and you rate and review us we'll we will actually shits. read it I, if you read us a one-star review i'll even read a shitty yeah. one-star review but it's yeah fine. rate us and review us on itunes because that'll actually help boost us in the itunes chart and make us a little bit more visible because we are um we're attention horse and we really I mean duh Look, there's a reason we're doing this. And one is we love to hear ourselves talk. Two is that we're just looking for any type of uh, affirmation that we can get in public. So anyway, for Pop Goulash, I'm Ruben. I'm Dana. And I am Mr. Hot Sauce. (laughs) And he will be back, by the way. Be kind to each other. Have a great week, guys. Bye. Bye, bitches. (laughs)